what it do. Welcome to the No Life Gaming Show. This is where we talk about gaming, tech, many, many other topics. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, don't forget to check out our Twitter at No Life Gaming. Check it out right over there. That's where you can find all the updates to what we're doing. And then our uh, streaming channel on Twitch, backslash no underscore lives. Just follow both of them if you haven't already. We are rocking and rolling. We've, uh, we're have we almost up to, I think, uh, what is this? Almost 65 followers on Twitter. And um, not, that, not that many on Twitch, but we haven't really... We haven't really uploaded too much, so we're really just um, focusing on the show right now. We're doing our best to try to put together a lot more stuff. I'm actually technically on vacation this month, and I expect to be playing a lot of video games, and I expect to be uploading a lot to this channel. So if you are a fan of this channel, you will be hearing me a lot more here rather than the other channels that I'm associated with. Um, so without further ado, let's bring on the team. What it is, team? What's up, everyone? How's everyone doing? How was your week? How was your weekend? Oh, it was pretty decent. Not too bad. Just slept a lot. Uh, I had a pretty steady headache for like three days. It just finally. Really? Yeah, just finally evened out this last day. Yeah, not like a migraine. You know, uh, I think you, you do you get migraines? Yeah. Yeah, it, it wasn't as bad as a migraine. It was like just a just a dull headache. Did you take aspirin? Yeah. Yeah, it took like a leave and stuff like that. And it still lasted for that long. Yeah, it, 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 well, I mean, it wasn't like steady. It was like uh, I would have a headache for a few hours and then, you know, for a couple hours I wasn't and then it would come back. Maybe it's your um, your vision. Maybe. I probably need new glasses or something like that. I'm sure these are really old glasses. Yeah, that's usually Keep. the first thing for me is like figure out if, if, if it's my glasses. That's how they found out I needed glasses as a kid, and I had constant headaches. Nope. Yeah. yeah your eyes are say- constantly like this, and it just puts strain on your fucking head. You're like, oh, why do mm-hmm. I have headaches? <laughs> why do I have headaches? Oh. My, my uh, go-to is Excedrin. Like, Excedrin just always works for me. Yeah, me too, except uh, the other day, I was, take, I was drinking coffee in the morning. I was drinking coffee in the morning and coffee at night. So there's two coffees right there. I drank a coffee in the middle of the day. I had um, a really bad headache, so I took two Excedrin, my morning coffee, and then two Excedrin uh, like later on in the afternoon. So I'm on like Jesus. three cups of, or four cups of coffee, and then two times Excedrins. And my heart was like, Kate was like, "Why is your heart beating so fast?" And I'm just like, "You're I have taking no idea. Excedrin with caffeine in it." I have no yeah. idea. And then finally, and that's, why I think, that's why I mean, if I don't have Excedrin and I take like Aleve or Advil, I'll drink a Coke or I'll have a coffee just for that caffeine. Yeah. Kate was like, why is your fucking nose bleeding? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, wow. Uh, I, no wow. <laughs> wow. I actually I actually changed over from, uh, I used to drink a lot of coffee, but I actually changed over to just trying to just drink uh, tea, which I mean also has caffeine in it, but I'm drinking, uh, <laughs> I'm drinking, I'm drinking I'm uh, drinking passion fruit papaya tea right now. Oh, it's so pretty. It's well, fancy. Pretty. It's pretty, you know, it's pretty good. <laughs> I, I, switched, man. Dude, I switched to black coffee. I cut the cream. I used to yeah. uh, drink tea be, uh, much more than I drank coffee. Um, but then, I don't know, I kind of started drinking coffee again. But I would love to get back to tea because you're not, it's not a jittery caffeine, man. It's a much better caffeine. You're just like chill and mellow all day. Do a little stretching in the morning. Like do some of this, right? Drink some drink some nice uh some nice black tea with some good caffeine in there, some honey. Mm-hmm. Fuck. I mean if you want to do that wanna, I, I, if you want to start, I suggest you say you drink a cup at night of coffee. Switch out that cup of coffee at night for a cup of tea. I think I'm going to. That's probably a good idea. Oh yeah, definitely do that. Cuz there's also I'm not going to lie, usually when I drink tea too, I drink the stuff without caffeine. Cuz there's some really good like nuttier teas that don't have caffeine in it and they're great for falling there's, asleep there's some also like really good herbal blends that are uh decaffeinated yeah uh yes yeah. Herbal, like green herbal teas. blends <laughs> <laughs> uh, herbal tea mm-hmm. 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 get that uh, sleepy time jerry we're uh we're seeing that you're outside i'm i'm guessing a we're not going to act like we don't notice that you're outside. What are you doing, Jerry? Uh, I'm currently manning a grill right now. <laughs> so I'm just doing this from outside for right now. 
Just mind up. you, he's been grilling the past four hours, so he's grilling something. That it's we don't a, know it's about. been nine hours, yeah. <laughs> been grilling for nine hours. You gotta get that slow cook, man. Yeah, that slow, that slow <laughs> burn. That get, slow get the hardwood ribs. broken out, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, let's jump into the show. What have we been playing? I'm gonna announce something that I've been playing that is probably you guys are gonna laugh, but I've been playing Overwatch on PS4. What? Why? Because um, I have my, my gaming computers here. I'm getting an echo from someone, by the way. Um, my gaming computers here at my office, and I like to play games at my house, and I can't play Overwatch on my Mac, so I have to. So I got it on PS4 last night, and I uh, have been playing it, and um, it's quite different. There's two th- different things about it. One is like the community on PS4 is a lot different than the community on pc and it's not in a good way it's like it's it's very different it's, it's all, toxic it's pretty toxic man dude it's it's that ex, that old you know remember when you were 12 and you had your first xbox live account yeah 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 because you figure it's like the game to play so all everyone's gonna want to play it and then you um, mostly on mostly console is just loaded with younger a younger audience and uh yeah. It's just a breeding ground for just some of the worst people on the fucking planet. <laughs> and then two, the controls are it's way more different than mouse and keyboard. I wish I can set up a mouse and keyboard on my PS4, but uh, like the controller, while it's different, it's not that bad. I don't know if there's aim assist, but it doesn't there is. feel there, bad. No, there is. There is. Right? Okay, yeah, there is aim assist. That's why it's really interesting too, because like from what i've noticed the times i have played it on console the meta is really different mm-hmm. yeah like, dude i bet you everybody's like really struggling to different. lock uh winston and diva <laughs> and, yeah. uh yeah all those all those champions with like more spread that are less aim resistant yeah. well, i mean like reliant imagine it's that too but i mean like even like even more what on a PC you would consider kind of a simpler champion, it can be a different, completely different control setup. Like imagine Lucio, if you don't yeah. have like precision movement, you know what I mean? Like True. there's just yeah. weird, it's a different meta because it's a, it's a different platform. And I used to play um, Call of Duty on console a lot. I'm sure everyone has. And the controls always felt really good on Call of Duty. It's a first person shooter, but they were able to kind of get the controls pretty good. Um, and I feel like Overwatch does it, I wouldn't say better, but about the same level of control. I haven't touched the sensitivity. I left it on default sensitivity. I find it works really well. Um, but I've been playing like a lot of Doomfist, and I haven't really jumped into like Soldier or anything or or uh, uh, Widowmaker, um, uh, where you need like really strong precision. Um, so I don't I don't know how well it's gonna turn over to that. But you see a lot of them. You see a lot of Hanzos on console, and it it's a little bit different, but you know, I, I don't have an, I don't really have another choice. I can't play on the Mac, so the PS4 it is for now, and that's what I've been playing. I've been playing Splatoon 2 still, um, and I've been having a good time with that. But I am starting to get bored of it. I uh, I switched to motion controls. Oh yeah, you were saying that. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's if wait, I'm not I got li- a question. As long as I'm not lying down, there's motion control on the on the Pro controller, right? There is motion control on the Pro Controller as well as Is that well what you do? The actual tablet. I've been playing like in handheld mode a lot, actually. Um, kind of like how it used to be with the uh, gamepad for the Wii U, except the Switch itself is just a thousand times better than that crappy-ass Wii U gamepad. I don't understand um, how... It just doesn't click for me, the motion controls. Because it doesn't it's, let it you... Takes, it does take a little bit, and you really do have to go in and just go into like the test mode and play around with your sensitivity. Yeah. Certain weapons, I feel like you need certain, like roller, <laughs> roller. You can play either way because it's the aim is not. You're not aiming with the roller. You're just straight up like spraying no, well, for luck and just rolling. You gotta paint that shit, dude. Yeah. With well, like, I mean, the splatter shot or the like the charge. Yeah, I would. You'd have to change your sensitivity. Is it kind of like the? Uh, I remember uh, when I, I I bought a Wii when I back when I had a Wii. I had uh, Res- the Resident Evil 4 remake, which, believe it or not, in my opinion, the uh, res- the best version of Resident Evil 4 before it came out on PC was the Wii because just because of the controls, because it was so easy because you could move around with your stick 
and then just point at the screen to aim. Is that how it is? Or with uh, uh, it's 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 not really IR because that the whole Wii mote was based on IR sensor with the Wii bar. Mm. Um, this is more like a gyroscope. So, so basically, like, it's like you 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 can only turn turn uh, with the right stick. It doesn't let you move up and down. Like look up and down. You have to control your your controller like this to move up and down. So. Like I always kind of like wanna like I'll do a quick turn with the right stick and then forget that you have to tilt the fucking pad to aim up or down and then I'll just subconsciously do it with the right stick and it won't let you and it fucks you up. And there's a yeah, quite there's certainly learning a learning curve for it. I will say that. And yeah, I we were li I was listening to some podcast like like a video on YouTube where they were talking and the guy sounded full of himself about it. Yeah, the best example <laughs> sure. of why motion control is nice was actually a video, like if it in action, because the idea is is let's say you use that uh, was the inkjet where you go into the sky and you can shoot around you. If you want to aim and you maybe move too far, you have to keep putting in inputs with that right stick. With the motion control, if you go too far, you can easily revert, or you can go from target to target to target. Without, oh yeah, that's it's less inputs thing. essentially, so you have a, a higher right. accuracy. Oh, that's that's another the thing. idea. But yeah. like I said, you gotta play with it to really get a feel for it. You're not gonna pick it up and immediately feel intuitive. That's the other thing too. Like you have you have to press Y and it'll lock onto that. So say you are comfortable like this, you would press Y. So any kind of tilt motions are relative to your position. So what I always ends up happening to me is like I'll end up not i don't know the controller up uh, it'll be like this like how the fuck are you supposed to play the switch when you're looking you know you're trying to shoot like this it doesn't make any sense so the the notion is to just keep pressing y to constantly kind of revert your your uh your system back to where it is and it's just too much man it, it, the right yeah, stick like, is I know fine like, i like, like the pro controller I a lot play better. like this i play it like down yeah yeah but then, then you have the if you tilt too it. low like if you aim low then you can't quite see what's going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that, that was a lot. I haven't, I haven't I really have. played around with the pro controller using my, like con like my TV, uh, that kind of motion control yet. I just been mostly using it in the tabletop setting, like the handheld setting. I can see that um, working a lot better. The pro controller. It, yeah. It just feels motion. a lot better to play like that. And I mean, the game runs at a locked smooth 60 FPS and even at 720p, like in handheld, it looks nice. So yeah, it does look really good. And I will Those say colors, that the, the pro controller, <laughs> the pro controller is actually one of my favorite controllers these days. It just feels so good, man. That's such a great controller. I, I used my Wii U pro controller on my PC a lot because I was able to connect it through like uh, Bluetooth and that thing had a 40 hour battery life. Which compared to like when I was using like a PS3 controller that died after six hours. Yeah, I know. It and, still do. Yeah, and you and the P uh, the the Switch controller, the Pro controller, is native to PC. You can hook it up right to your PC without having to really fiddle with a lot of stuff. It's um, Bluetooth. It's I mean it's not it's not X input. It's you know so you're not going to be able to play a lot of Steam games with it, but it works for emulators and things like that. And it's a really comfortable controller. Yeah, I like it a lot. Um, I don't know if it's better than the Xbox One controller, but I do like it. I think the Xbox One controller is the best controller out there. How much I was, does the Xbox One controller sell for retail wise? 60? I think it's like fifty. Yeah, fifty or sixty. Because yeah. that's my one. Like that's always been going to be my picking point with the Switch is the accessories are just so goddamn expensive. Yeah, uh, the, I really like the Xbox One controller. I use it for when I use it for uh, PC gaming. Yeah, me that's, too. That's the only thing I, I use. I wish I could use it for PS4. That's how much I like it. Or all my games, to be honest. No, nah, y'all wrong. PlayStation controller is bad, dude. Really? That old, I mean, it's, that, it's those hard. old PlayStation say, controllers are bad, dude. Fuck I the can't Xbox say controller. any of them are bad. They're all good controllers. It really just comes down to personal preference. Like, I mean, I grew up with PlayStation, so the dual analog. Like, I remember before they had analog sticks on the PlayStation 1 controller. I yeah, I mean, I, like I grew up with a PlayStation controller too, but the thing is, is uh, I don't know when the Xbox 360 controller came out. It's just I don't know something about the thumb placements. Yeah, just feels a lot better to me. Me too. No, I, okay. I don't know. If you could pick, I don't know, if you could pick any controller in the history of controllers that you think was not only the best but like some of the most innovative. What was your favorite controller? 
N64 controller. Oh, N64 looking N64. ass. I was about to what? Say yeah. that was that goofy terrible. ass piece of shit controller. I hate oh part God. of the controller you never used. It was always the hand in the middle. That's the worst controller ever. Oh, oh, no, it is Super great. Nintendo controller is my all time favorite controller. No way. Yeah. Xbox Xbox One is or the Xbox 360, I guess, is it's still the same controller. Um, yeah, the so 360 good, controller dude. is a lot better than the original. Original, nope. the original Nobody's Xbox, I hated. Oh, yeah. the <laughs> the, the original Xbox. Xbox controller that was like this big. Yeah. It was the Duke, mm-hmm. man. It was like fucking. Yeah, dude. What about the steel it was too Italian big and it was terrible. Playing what about Halo that big with that ass thing? controller from the original Xbox for like that that battle game. Oh, the fucking <laughs> mech controller. Yeah. Yeah. The thing that was like <laughs> as big as like your desk. Yeah, it was that fucking. It was like five hundred dollars. <laughs> It's like, yeah, yeah I'll get right so on to play your, your shitty mech game where I need to fucking clear out my living room. No, I, I like the, the Xbox One controller, um, but obviously it's personal. I, I used to like the DualShock, but just moving that left analog up to where the D-pad is would just alleviate all of my problems. I just love it like that. How about the Steam controller? Any of you guys use one of those? I still keep meaning to... But I feel like I'm not going to like it as much as having an analog stick. But I want to play, play with it. Because I, I get what you're saying with the placement. And I will... Uh, I like I don't know, dude. I'm still a big fan of the PlayStation. And I do like the fact that with the Steam controller, they are in the same spot. Because that's what my hands did. Uh-oh. Uh, the DualShock 2. DualShock 2 is a piece of shit. You're lagging a little bit. We lost you for about a couple seconds. We I just like how it. just freeze frame on Jerry just doing <laughs> like fucking bear pose. We saw the bear pose and then we heard do shock two is a piece of shit. That's all. That's what <laughs> yeah, we got. That, was, that, was, that was my boy pretty much. <laughs> I was like, I like, okay, I, I like the old, I like the PlayStation one and the PlayStation <laughs> three controllers a lot. Dual shock two is a piece of shit. <laughs> all right. Um, so any of you guys been playing anything else? Uh, I've Lag, just dude, been playing, playing Lag City. <laughs> I've just been playing uh, fucking League of Legends. I don't know why. I'm getting back into League of Legends. I've been playing a lot of League of Legends. Really? And uh, yeah, dude, like I used to be like hardcore addicted to League of Legends. And the thing is, is when you really like playing League of Legends that much, you never really quit. It's kind of like smoking cigarettes. You always have that (laughs) fucking urge somewhere, even if you're like, this game is not going to be good for me. I need to stay away from this game. (laughs) Like in your head, you know, like, you know what? It's changed. You know, the game has changed. There's usually, a lot of different. Usually when drinking, like cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's like usually when I'm at my weakest, the <laughs> my brain is like, League of Legends has changed. You know, they changed the queue system. The community isn't as toxic. They uh, introduced more honor, uh, honor rewards and a new honor system that, you know, it helps it with the toxicity a little bit. Now, but yeah, it- I've been playing. Do all these changes actually do they are they really like, believe it or make not? You I believe back? that their new uh, their new honor system change has actually done good. <laughs> okay. Believe it or not, because everybody it's not that people are better people, it's just that they want the rewards so they just don't fucking talk in game now. Right. You rarely get people talking in game. It's not that they're being nice or sportsmanlike or friendly or anything they're just not fucking talking and that's all i ask for just don't talk to me (laughs) if if i make a mistake i know i made the mistake you know i made the mistake just shut the fuck up (laughs) and keep playing the game it's not helping anybody you know (laughs) no dude i gotta make sure you know you made that mistake yeah my dude dude. you you made that mistake not me dude you (laughs) make sure you know that i'm way better than you and that the reason you made that mistake is because you're not as good as me p.s i did not make that mistake four minutes ago but you made that mistake six (laughs) minutes ago you fuck (laughs) yeah exactly dude but it's i think it really has helped with the toxicity that and they do have a new uh when you play ranked or when you play normal draft they do have a new queue system where you can queue for specific roles And if you've ever played League before and you've played Ranked or uh, Draft or anything, you know that that was a big issue. When you would get into the lobby and people would just be fighting over roles (laughs) and, you know, what basically what turn you picked. 
Yeah. You could just pick any role you you wanted. Pretty much, it was just pick order. That mm-hmm. that used to be the the old way of things. But yeah, I think that's helped out. So I played that, and I've actually been playing some of Fortnite. I didn't get any footage for it because I just started playing yesterday. Now I got a question because I was about to play it yesterday, but you, it's not free to play right now, right? You no. have to actually pay it for it now. Yeah, there's like uh, four different starting bundles, but to be honest with you, don't buy anything above the standard bundle because I bought the standard bundle, played for like ten minutes, and it in this in this game their version of the loot box is a pinata. It's oh, a pinata llama. <laughs> that yeah. you have to bust open. But they give you, just because you bought into early access, uh, even at the lowest tier that you buy in at, which is $40, um, they give you like 15 of those llamas to open. And I got, I think after I finished opening everything, I had 95 items. What? So, uh, yeah. Um, there's no reason to buy anything over than the lowest tier unless you just really want to holy shit that's good but i'm still pissed off about it not gonna lie yeah no i I, I understand completely i saw that shit uh crofty was telling me about how it was you know you you could buy into it and you can play it and so i went to the website and i looked and they have like a hundred and fifty dollar (laughs) dollar yeah like, hey, dude, do you want these exclusive legendary shit? Uh, $150 version yeah. of the game will get you that. Yeah, the thing, the thing is, is you can't craft half that shit in the beginning anyway. So it doesn't even matter, to be honest with you, if you have that shit. Because it's just going to sit there until you can craft it. I opened up some, like, epic hero or something like that. Which, by the way, you do have, like, there are heroes, but there's multiple versions of the same hero. Like I'm not talking like skin wise. I'm just talking about stat wise and rarity wise. There's multiple yeah. versions of the same hero, I so didn't... you're going to be opening a lot of duplicates that are still <laughs> technically Useless, different. Basically. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what's the well, gameplay I, like? I, well, wait. Uh, before one second, can I ask a really weird question before you get to the gameplay? Because I'm still confused about how. Okay, how are the loot boxes? done because i get that that's the that's how you get everything but like mm. do you have to buy them or do you earn them uh well so far right now i'm earning them but you can't that's earn good. them okay, yeah you good. yeah good. you can earn them uh which i mean if i bought into a game and then once i got in they were like hey we're giving you fuck all and you gotta buy <laughs> you gotta buy the loot boxes with real money then i would yeah i would i would be highly upset but no you can yeah. earn them um, you be- I was gonna say you better be able to, or otherwise I'm just gonna burn this game to the ground. Like I'm not paying, f- <laughs> I'm not paying forty dollars or full price for a game that I then have to spend money to get anything other than cosmetics. You know what I mean? If I have to be yeah. able to get the things to play the fucking game, I have to spend money after buying it full price. Really? But I thought well, it was not really only that- free to play though. Yeah, it's going to be free to play, I believe. So you just have to pay for the for the early access, I guess. Yeah, uh, th- that's okay. how it is generally that's, with these kind of games. That's better then. Because but, say, if they're trying to do it like that, though, yo, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but uh, there are quests in the game as well that you can complete that they give you schematics and uh, a little experience boost and stuff like that. But uh, gameplay wise, it's kind of like horde mode that you you that you can like craft your. Basically, what'll happen is in a general mission is they'll drop you into an area, an unexplored area, and you have to run around and explore it, and you can collect resources like chop down trees, break apart cars, uh, loot buildings, stuff like that. And everything that you loot carries over from mission to mission. So you aren't just running in there, looting stuff, and then once your, once your mission is over, everything disappears. I mean, all your resources are just continuous. So you run around collecting stuff, find the little area that you're supposed to protect and then you build a base around that area to protect it. And then you fight off zombies and the zombies, it's kind of like a mix between the zombies are a mix between what I would say, uh, plant plants versus zombies, kind of cartoon zombies. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they're kind of mixed up with like left for dead, like archetypes of zombies. Like there's a charger, there's a, but there, there's 
what's obviously like you know the big bile fat bile monster from right. uh, Left for Dead, but yeah. he doesn't spit out bile. But he's obviously modeled after that one. So yeah. Oh, that's I mean, good. It, good. The it, concept it, it, art, dude. The concept art. I thought it was made by the people who made Plants vs Zombies. It's yeah. that close. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like it's I. It obviously it's painfully obvious that it takes very. It, it, I don't know, man. It, it borrows from the whole image of Plants vs. Zombies a lot, in my opinion. But it looks really good. Uh, it's a fun game. I would not play this game alone. Uh, I mean, you can because there's a party system that they'll match you up with, you know, just random people that are playing alone. But I believe you would have a lot of fun with this game with other people that you know. Because every time that I've played alone and not with a uh, crofty, every time I've played alone, it'll stick me in this room with three people. None of us are talking to each other. <laughs> There's a right. chat system, but none of us are talking to each other. We're all running around doing our own thing until somebody eventually starts up the horde mode. Mm -hmm. And then we okay. run over to, uh, to the horde mode place and we defend that. And then the mission's over and everybody leaves, you know? I mean... If you're it, playing with people you know, it's going to be fun. If you're in like voice chat on Discord or something, talking with people, it's going to be tons of fun. But if you're just playing by yourself the whole time, I don't think it's going to be that fun. I think you'll get tired uh, of it. Honestly, I'm really interested in it and I want to play it. I just don't, I got really turned off by that buy in system. But it, it looks like uh, if Left 4 Dead 2 and like Seven Days to Die or a game like that had a baby like where it does have that kind of crafting system and like base defense that seems like a lot of fun, but it actually has an objective. Like there's mission, there are missions to it and like, okay, you have an objective and once you're done, you're like, there you go. You move on to the next one. So it's have seems you ever played uh, like a lot of fun. Must die. Have you ever played? Orcs yeah. Must die? Yeah. yeah it reminds like me of that, that too. too. Yeah. yeah. Like tower defense. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Like that's why I was thinking kind of seven days to die ish where like you're, you know, you're, you just try to build a place to survive a horde. But at the same time, it gives me that, you know, Left 4 Dead vibes of like with the RPG system in it where you're crafting too. But it's like, I mean, it's just, you know, you get along with three other friends and you just shoot zombies for a half hour. Like, hell yeah, dude. Maybe I'll pick this up. Maybe we can stream this game. Yeah, dude. It's really fun. The, the one thing I will say, though, before anybody picks it up, the tutorial the first little bit of the tutorial, it's fun to play and, you know, and you, you get the whole, the stylized, uh, the, the character of everything. And it's really fun. The tutorial is shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. It teaches you how to play like the mission part a little bit, but it's not going to teach you the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would look up some YouTube tutorials or something before I delve into it. You know what I mean? Like the tutorials system is not that great because I'm, I was sitting there confused for the first 30 minutes uh, after I finished the tutorial, just like, what, okay, what now? You know, <laughs> what? It looks what pretty cool. What the fuck do I do? I like horde modes, and I like, like, zombie games like this. Like, I loved Left 4 Dead 2, man. I used to fucking play that game forever. Um, so, I'm actually really interested in this. Yeah, man, check it out. It blends everything I mean, it, it's not too shabby. I played a little bit this morning before I went to sleep. I was just hearing bad things about it. I, I was hearing like the, the loot doesn't really matter. Like the loot's kind of well, pointless right now. It's, I, I wouldn't say that it's pointless because you do upgrade and you get better loot. And it's just, I don't know. It's something, I think it has to do with the crafting maybe right. because I feel like I'm getting, because I got those like 15 loot boxes or whatever in the beginning, I got tons of shit that I, you know, that I could craft, but I don't have the materials for it. And right. so it's just sitting there. And I'm using like a baseball bat right now. <laughs> I think is my main weapon. So you, does that we weapon carry on to like your player? So it's not like a class based game like Overwatch or something. Yeah, no. There are there are kind of there. Everybody does have like different classes, I would say. But uh, it's not. Yeah, it's not like okay, this character has a bat and a sword and a shotgun, That's and right. you can't use that bat, that sword, that shotgun on a different character. There's like a global inventory that you can use weapons between other characters. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. The only thing that's like specific would be uh boost. Like you level up your characters and you level up your guns. So you can get duplicates of the same gun, but 
those guns will have different like level up uh, bonuses. Like one will have extra crit or one will have extra damage and you can choose between that. All right. No, like so, I mean, it, it, there's a lot of grind in the game. Like there's a lot of potential, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't say loot is useless. I just, it's, it, I don't know. I think it's the crafting system. It's kind of slow. Like you don't really know what you need to be gathering and there's a lot of stuff that you need to be gathering. I'm, I'm interested. I'm interested in, um, I, it's kind of weird that there it's going to be free to play, but you have to pay into the beta. That is weird. That's kind of like uh, a lot of the Korean MMOs or like oh, that. They do that? Yeah, or? like, yeah, the Korean style of MMO, they'll, uh, it'll be a free to play game that's eventually going to be free to play, but you can just buy into the, mm-hmm. buy into the beta. All right. Anyone else playing anything past week? Anything? New? I got one. Um, <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a I'll have an episode um, of the Pokemon Nuzlocke coming out probably tomorrow, just because uh, the weekend was my birthday, so I wasn't really able to upload anything. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday! Thank you. And uh, I have was- a I have a Quanba Obsidian on its way, so I'll be doing a video on that for our channel. Which is a fight stick. If you didn't fight know yo, what the fuck he's, I'm excited. <laughs> Are you fucking controller. Playing? I'm sorry, man. I can't do fighting games on the controller. I need a fight stick. You can if you played uh, Injustice, which I was actually yeah. playing yesterday as well. Like I said, or, I did the game. you just play arms. And my thumbs were hurting. Oh, you just play arms, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't touched that game in like three weeks. <laughs> I know, that game's fucking terrible. <laughs> Spl- well, Seems to be, fair, to be the Splatoon consensus. Came yeah. out, and then I kind of was like, yeah. No, I'm all about Splatoon right now. That was a fucking huge flop. Huge flop. Oh, well. Next, moving on. Um, Go ahead, man. Well, what I was going to say is uh, Loco might be interested in what I've been playing a lot this last week and weekend. Civ 6. Got back into Civ Civ 6 because they do have Nubia out now. But even more important than Nubia, who is overpowered, is fucking broken. They finally, finally, finally (laughs) re-added... Sorry, your lag is just so funny, dude. Yeah, dude, it's just like it's like you lag for a split second and then it just caught up. So you went like oh. fast forward mode, dude. That was hilarious. I've never but seen yeah, that before. Civ Six, I'm hype as fuck yeah. for What's Nubia. What's Nubia? A new uh, hero, dude. Game? Okay, Nubia's Nubia's. Hero. Yeah, it's a new civilization. It's broken as fuck, but more important than that. They added it across the entire base game. Everything. There's finally a fucking uh, restart button again. Oh yeah, I just I just googled Civ Six to get some uh, images, and that's the first thing. Civ Six gets a restart button. Rolling Stone yeah. magazine, <laughs> Rolling Stone magazine wanted to let us know. It's pretty cool, dude. It it that, those kinds of games that you want a restart button, especially for the early game, so you can like make sure you don't just start a game with a really shitty spot. And they finally added it after how you know what a year. Yeah, that that's a uh, very. Just, for for some the game's strategies, that good for two years. Yeah, I mean, for some strategies in that game, and some uh, like especially when you play on Deity and Immortal and stuff like that. Like when you start out a new game, you have to restart. You have to restart like a good two to three times. To get like Jerry's a gone good spot. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. you you need like resources, uh, like uh, specific resources and luxuries. Like you, you generally want like when you start, you generally want like at least two different kinds of luxuries, like two different kind, not two of the same. And you want multiples of one kind of luxury at least, so you can trade it off. Uh, but yeah, yeah, there used to be in Civ Five. There's a quick restart to where you could just reload the game over and over again. But in Civ Six, you had to like exit out of that of the game and like give up and retire and start over the whole process again. Yeah, well, it's because you also want like on top of the luxuries and stuff. I just did it again. I just did it again. I can tell exactly when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> Are you like a, on like a mobile data? Are no Wi Fi. That that Wi Fi life. Yeah, but no, that's just, yeah. What I was saying is like you also not even just that you want it for food and production values. Like I'm not playing a, I'm not starting a DD game and a tundra set. 
Yeah, like exactly. it's just not happening, dude. Exactly. It's not happening. So that's that's huge. But also, Nubia seems really cool. Actually, they like they're uh, they have like a it's, um, like Egyptian Egyptian kind of yeah. They're uh, well, they're uh, their their power is very similar to it, like Egypt as well. Like instead of having a sphinx, they have something very similar to a sphinx that can. Uh, you know, it's a land, it's a tile power up basically, or a tile set piece improvement that's actually really good. And then, if you have one of those next to your city or where you want to put a district, it basically cuts the time to build the district in half, which is insane. And they also have a super powerful archer, so basically, they just can steamroll early game. Yeah, classic age monster, <laughs> kind of yeah. like Rome, dude. Yeah, like. Just they're just gonna be a god. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well uh, moving on. <laughs> um, I guess we'll get into the news. In the news, Dragon oh, Quest god. Eleven confirmed for 2018 Western release. Yeah, it's not so big that it's it's confirmed a release, but it's big that it's confirmed a Western release. Oh, you were Consider- talking about Fire Emblem Echoes. For some reason, I thought they were the, the same game. No, this is like the Dragon Quest MMO, pretty much. Well, that's pretty cool. Isn't this? No, no, that's no, 10. no, no. That's no. 10. Yeah, yeah, 11 yeah. is the new single-player game. Yeah. That's on both PS4 and Nintendo 3DS, which is really weird. <laughs> but and apparently a Switch version is also coming, but buy the PS4 version or the 3DS version. PS4 it, is going to look really nice. 3DS has a retro kind of like art to it. They're the, sa- they're the same game, which is really weird. Oh, that's kind of cool. the same cool. game, but with the 3DS one, you can either play with like that kind of like 3D graphics or you can switch it to be like that retro like Dragon Quest V and VI style. Yo, Which I cool. love because those games are super underrated. Uh, Dragon they Quest were in really Japan, good. like Dragon Quest is bigger than like we would talk about how like maybe I guess the biggest RPG series in Final the Fantasy, West is, like Final Fantasy. Dragon Quest is the it's biggest huge. one in Japan. It's bigger than Final Fantasy is. Yeah, it's it's fucking huge, and like half of the games didn't come over to uh, the West until pretty much until like like Last some of them got ported years. to the 3DS. Um, the older ones got ported to the DS and the 3DS. We, I mean, go back and play Dragon Quest Eight on the PS2. That is still a fantastic game. Yeah, you know, dude. They that's how I got into it. it on, they re- re-released it on 3DS, though, with yeah. extra content. So yeah, I would it, actually it play it, it on the really 3DS. It plays really well on there, too. Dude, that, um, that's mean, how it, I got into Dragon Quest, dude, was I got Dragon Quest. It was either 7 or 8, and it was uh, on a demo disc for PlayStation 2. And Don't I was forget, like, this is amazing. Akira Toriyama does the artwork for it. The guy yeah. behind Dragon Ball Z and Chrono Trigger. Like, the art style is great. Yeah, if you if you like that Dragon Ball Z type of animation or look or art style, dude, Dragon Quest is your shit because he does all of the art for it. Since, and they are long Ever since games. I can remember. They are yeah. really long. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's yeah, very cool. Like, they have two tiny different... too, so I don't know if Wayne will like them. No, definitely if, not. It... <laughs> definitely if, not. If somebody, if somebody was looking to get into JRPGs and didn't know where to start, I would tell them to start with uh, Dragon Quest Eight because it's nothing like too revolutionary about it, about that specific game, but it's just so refined. It's just it's just really good at what it does. And it's just, you know, a really it's good, a, it's a, it's a rock solid story. Characters are really good. The development of the characters is really good and gameplay with just your general, your RPG turn base. It's, yep. it's a lot of fun. There's nothing really, there's nothing really, really unique about the actual gameplay and the game systems, but, uh, what it does do, it does it really well. So yeah, I would recommend Dragon Quest Eight for anybody looking to get into JRPGs. All right. Yep. Awesome. Dota Two rolls out friendly welcome wagon for noobs. Um. So what are they doing here? Just some uh, making it easier for them. Yeah. 
based from what I saw, they're making it a lot easier to get into the game because when you start playing, you're only going to be matched with people who are ranked as like friendly, basically, because that game can get toxic as all fuck. If you think League's bad, like go try to play some Dota. Mm. Yeah, but most, they're doing that. But like the other sport games are like that. The other cool thing that makes me want to try it on a new account, they're apparently limiting it to only like 25 champions you can select. So they're trying to limit it to champions that are actually more friendly to beginners, especially to the way Dota is played, instead of, you know, here, just choose anyone out of 100 yeah. champion pool or whatever which I think is actually a really cool step. And I think other people should possibly start doing that. Yeah. I, th I think I might try to, I might try to get back into Dota two or not get back into, cause I never really learned it to begin with. I was always a league player. And then, uh, I mean, I tried to play a little bit of Dota two, but it was just too, there's too much. It's just too much <laughs> in my opinion. Like there's like three different stores. There's, you unlock as soon as you start playing the game, you have access to all of the champions, mm -hmm. and there's tons of them. But, like Jerry said, it limits the pool down to where you're not picking like overly complex, uh, combo driven champions or champions that like you really have to know what you're doing to play or know the mechanics of the game to play. It's you know, people that you can learn on, but I think it's the first 20 matches or so, and then after the 20 matches you unlock everybody like normal. And uh, also, I, I don't know if you touched on it, but the matchmaking, they're going to match make you with people closer to your skill, but also closer, like people with good, uh, good, be good behavior records. So basically, you know, you won't be trashed as soon as you, you know, you're trying to learn the game and you're just trashed by everybody. Is that like a problem that they had where that people were complaining? They were like, I don't want to play this game because this community is fucking trash. Dude, that's MOBAs. <laughs> It's just MOBAs in general. Every so, MOBA oh, that okay. you play. So it's inherent only, in their game. Okay. Yeah, I think the only MOBA I've ever played and learned how to play that was not extremely toxic from the get-go was uh, Heroes of the Storm. Yeah. And that's just because it's by nature, it's more casual than the other MOBAs. Like, yeah, it's like a people chill. Aren't gonna, yeah, it's a chill game. Like You're going to get people that rage, but not near about as often as mm -hmm. any other MOBA. Like every other MOBA I've ever played, I played quite a few. Like every like the DC uh, Infinite Crisis MOBA, I played Heroes of New Earth. I played <laughs> League of Legends, uh, Dota Two, Smite. Uh, yeah, I've played a lot of MOBAs, and they're all toxic. That's just <laughs> how the community is, man. It's I think it's because the games are so long. To be honest with you, they're People usually like crazy. thirty or forty. Yeah, 30 or 40 minute games. If you sit there and you dedicate 30 or 40 minutes of your life to one single game yeah, and you're in crazy. the same match with some dude who just like has a fucking, <laughs> I mean, that's just ridiculous. And he's, you know, you know who I'm talking about. People who just shouldn't be playing video games. <laughs> you, you get a little bit ragey. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's cool that they're doing that. Because that, that, I, I just want, I want to get into the, I've just been late to the MOBA scene, you know, it kind of just passed me. I didn't have time to, at the time, I didn't have the time to kind of set aside to learn all these characters. I know how to play them and, I, and I've played a few of them. Like I've played League of Legends. I played um, uh, Smite and um, there's a couple other ones and you just need to really dedicate a lot of time to them and you need to dedicate I don't know. It, it's it's almost like a it's like a service game. Like those service games, like Overwatch, where you know you gotta just get better and keep playing and learn the characters that you you want to play and team up with people. And this is a cool way to get into one that sounds really complex. Um, I like if they did something like this for League of Legends, which because League of Legends to me is a little bit complicated. Well, uh, that's the thing is too uh, deep into it. League of, League of Legends already kind of does it. Dota's weird. Uh, yeah, like League of Legends already kind of does it because in Dota, there's like tons of champions and they're all open right from the beginning. In League of Legends, you have to buy your champions. So you're only given a rotation of about five champions a week that you can actually play for free until you have enough uh, in-game currency to buy your champions. Yeah. So it kind of already does it. Yeah, that, that, well, that, I forgot about that. They, they, you, you only have like the five, like you said. 
to choose from. And then I guess every week it changes. Um, now, when you buy one, it sticks with you, right? Because there was one person I yeah. was using that was like my main dude. I don't remember who it was. I don't know his name. Yeah, Paladin. Paladin? Paladin, maybe? Is that his name? Mr. Paladin? Oops. Mr. Paladin? What? <laughs> I don't know. That, Who the that's... fuck is Mr. Paladin? <laughs> he looks like a fucking... Uh, he looks like the Paladin in, in uh, uh, World of Warcraft. That's what he reminds me of. I don't fucking know his name. Uh, Tarek? Uh, Tarek? Can you even Tarek? remember what he did? What kind of uh, abilities he had? I know he was... It, dude, he it's was... Tarek. It's Tarek? It's Tarek. How do you yeah, spell it? Let me Google it. How do you spell T-A-R-I-C, it? T-A-R-I-C, you think? If you're thinking he looks like a paladin from World of Warcraft, he looks yeah. like a paladin from Burning Crusade, like tier five set with the purple, all purple. How do you spell it? T A R I C, Tarek. Oh, T A R I C. Yeah. Did he have like a stun? Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yep. He has a, a fucking. Um, I think this, I think it's him. Gems. I can't find any like regular pictures of him. They're all fucking. Gems. These, all these weird. <laughs> No, maybe it's not him. I, I I vaguely remember a helmet. He had a, a like a driving attack. Like you would he like sh- like drove through people. I don't fucking know. Dude. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Who fucking cares? But yeah, wow. man. Like, I I highly suggest. And like a driving I, attack. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, I highly suggest you Google Tarek and you and you understand what I'm going through <laughs> trying to find a picture of this dude. Um, okay, moving on. Cool. BBC Three will be broadcasting esports for the next six weeks. It's from Rock Paper Shotgun. Yeah, the next six weekends. Um, I mean, so what are they? What are they showing off here? It looks like. I think they'll have a uh, Rocket League, some CS:GO, some Street Fighter. Now uh, these I are mean, championships that that are going on. Or is I'm it not just sure. Like- that- I would imagine that they're uh, tournaments that are channel specific, like BBC specific. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it won't be. I don't know if it'll have as many viewers as say something on Twitch would have, but I, I don't think that's the point. I still think this is good that, you know. I mean, it's cool to see them trying. I mean, it is an online only channel, so when you yep. get to online only, might as well be it's good hard Twitch. to compete with Twitch. <laughs> Twitch is gonna destroy you. Yeah, pretty pretty much. But I'm glad that other companies are trying to, you know, they dip their to toe into the esport thing. It's kind of late, you know. They it's not like these are the pioneers. They're like, you know, not like ESPN was pioneering when they were, you know. Right. Um, showcasing some CSGO tournaments. But, I mean, it's late, but I guess better late than never. You know what I mean? I mean, and they they baked, they basically seen the kind of viewers that they can get. And they're like, well, oh, well, we can just put this shit on TV. People trust us more, and they'll I mean, watch us more, and we'll make more advertising revenue. I don't yeah, know well, what's popular in, in England. Soccer. Like, soccer. Well, so, soccer Rocket so, so, Rocket League. It's car <laughs> soccer. Yeah, they're going to love that shit. <laughs> yeah, like, like I don't well, think they have. If you a think about like, if you I don't think, think they have like a huge smash scene. If you think about like uh the way like skateboarding and and BMX mm-hmm. kind of blew up is like they had like tournaments that they would air on TV just like this, uh, was sort of like this, um, like main channels like ABC, NBC, and then from there it kind of grows and grows, and then before you know it, you know it's a major sporting event. So it looks like Daisy creator Dean Hall has a new game, Station Ears, entering early access in September. Um, I don't know nothing about this game, but it looks like some kind of... Uh, um, I know nothing about the game, but I do know that he has one game that's still in early access that isn't even fucking finished. <laughs> Why is he coming out with a new game? That's a good Why? point. Why? <laughs> that's a good point. Well, he Dude. says here, I want to try and do early access, quote unquote, right Fuck you, dude! Like people paid for your other game. Finish that. He he has do no that fucks. one right. He gives no fucks. Yeah, he doesn't. About yeah, he's, he's like, I've been working on this game. Basically, what he's saying is, I've been working on Daisy so long that I fucking hate it and I don't want to play it and I don't want to finish it. Yeah. And uh, so here's my next game. <laughs> yeah. So here's Enjoy. my next game. Enjoy, everybody, guys. everybody's playing PUBG now and they forgot about my game. My Day Z game. So uh, here's a new game. 
Dude, that's like it just reminds me of when Mighty Number no. Nine was on Kickstarter, and like before it even got funded, he was just like, "Hey, you guys like Mega Man Legends too, right? Why don't you fund this other project I also have working on? Except you know I'm not even done Mighty Number no. Nine, and then the game came out and it was shit, and then backers finally, finally after a year got their boxes, which by the way they had to construct themselves and doesn't even fit everything in it because uh, that's the prime example of how you don't run a fucking Kickstarter. Yeah. I just I saw this when I was when I was just like scanning through stuff and I was like, you know what? Fuck this guy. Fuck this guy, man. That's ridiculous. Like you don't even Daisy standalone was probably one of the most hyped Early Ever. access games that Ever. flopped terribly. Well, if you think about it, it was like the early access game yeah. that started early access games. Because, yeah, that and Minecraft. <laughs> because basically, they didn't know how to finish it and release <laughs> a real game. And it just yeah. literally, it that's the game. It's just an early access game. There's nothing else that came afterwards. Yeah, um, based, off, based off of a mod and the mod's a better game. Let's see if there's the any standalone. comments. I want to see if there's any comments on this uh, Polygon article. See what these people are saying. I will not give this man any money unless everyone <laughs> is playing this game and it is the best game ever. <laughs> That's the first comment. Yeah. <laughs> and then someone goes, right, this guy's slowly becoming another Molyneux. Oh. No, Molyneux, Peter Molyneux actually gave you finished games, though. Yeah, that's what the next So said. you can't even compare it. Like, <laughs> you know, this guy is the next, I don't know who, he's the next Dean Hall. That's who he is. Like, there's no precedent. You know what I mean? There's no precedent already set. Like, who's the guy who promises you video games, gives you half-made video games, that oh, says so he's going to finish them, and then goes and makes another video <laughs> game? He's the next KJ Inafune. That's all it is. Uh, the creator of Mighty Number no. 9. Uh, he says, this is not a casual game. This game has been designed for the hardcore player who wants games that are are very systems oriented. This game presents a variety of science-based survival problems that you'll have to solve yourself and then try to optimize your solutions over time. For those not seeking a very intensive and hardcore experience, this game is not for you. So it sounds like this one's gonna be an early access for a very long time, the way he's trying to put it together. It sounds like <laughs> this is gonna be filled with glitches and bugs he that are never gonna get fixed. He shouldn't even release an early access game. He should just, no. even if you call it a beta, or even if you call it some, don't release an early access game because you're he's, he's setting himself up for disaster. Fool me once, shame on me. And go Can't fool me, fool me twice. <laughs> and go fool me again. Yeah. No, seriously. Like I, I agree, Wayne. Uh, if you have a game that's in early access, that's been in early access for, I don't know, like what six years? How long has Daisy been in early access? Like six, seven years, something yeah, like that. It's been long and time. Uh, and you still haven't finished it. Don't insult my intelligence and release another game into early access. Hey, my dryer's going off. Oh, you got some nice dry clothes going. You got some dry clothes, my guy. Mm. You think Steam should like implement a thing where it's like, all right, you can only have this game in early access for X amount of time. Mm. Like, if you can't get a product out in six years at early access, what, yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, six like, years is a pretty pretty uh, substantial limit. I think that's a good one to have. Like, what are you making? Kingdom Hearts three? Or if oh. this is what the, this is what they should do? If it's not released in seven years. Then they should. It should. All the money that went to the Steam account should go back into the account holders' hands. Like it should yeah, just be refunded. Just get a back. refund. Yeah. They oh should my god. Have, or maybe like, like something reasonable, like one year or two years. Six years is fucking crazy. I would have. I would have. I would have still been salty, but I wouldn't have been angry if he would have released just released a full game. Yeah. If he would have released. Uh, that was it. Stationers is what this game's called. Yeah. If he would have just been like, "Hey, you know, I made this game while I was supposed to be finishing my other game," uh, but yeah, here it is. It's made and it's done. I would have been salty, and I wouldn't have bought it, but I wouldn't have been mad. This shit makes me mad. <laughs> so he has a game in yeah. early access for six years and makes another game when he could have finished the first game. Like this, this all just seems shady as fuck. Well, here he says, um, uh, while the Stationers launch has been posted, Hall wrote on the game's Steam form that it could slip a bit. So he's already expecting time slips. The date would be delayed if we do not think the game is ready, Hall wrote. I just think we should be a little more public now about our expected targets as it helps internally put a little pressure on the team. Uh, one commenter chided that the, 
that he had best limit the early access period in order to launch a more complete game, something that Hall rejected. The only thing I disagree with is the length of early access, Hall wrote. One of the reasons we wanted to do early access with this game is so that we could that it would evolve with the community through development. Early access is a great way to restrict the number of customers, yet still build a very focused community. It allows us to gauge the real interest in the game and scope it correctly without the danger of overscoping and bankrupting the studio. Um, so basically what he's saying is, is that I ha there's this there's something that pretty much he created the early access uh, or, or the the early access model I wouldn't say he created it but it's he's the the known one, the main one who exploited this system to basically take these people's money and introduce them and say let's just keep milking them let's see what they see if they're gonna enjoy the game and if they really are hyped about it and they really are really uh they really are excited about it then we'll release it for uh, well officially release it and then people will buy it but if that excitement's not there then guess what we still have we've still made our money back and we don't actually have to release it so he's 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 kind of gaming the system here he's kind of taking advantage of what an early access model is by doing this you know, a real company, when they release a product, they don't go, oh, hey, this is your Samsung phone, but this is an early release model. Um, so if you don't like it, unfortunately, we can't give you a refund back and just make sure you let us know all the bugs and stuff so we can keep building it. And then you, fit, you come to find out they never had intentions of actually making the phone complete and giving you a complete version. You know, it, it's fucked up. It's really fucked up. Hey, here's uh, here's our early access uh, Samsung phone. Uh, why don't you beta test it and give us information on bugs and everything like that and features you'd like to see implemented and we will take that information put it into a new phone and sell you the early access version yeah, of that phone exactly yeah. then give us some feedback on that phone <laughs> <laughs> all right moving on um i have some some tech news but i want to wait for jerry to get back uh, before we do that one, so we'll move on to this one hard difficulty in upcoming metroid samus returns to be unlocked with amiibo Wow, really? They're gonna go like that with it? Yeah, dude, these amiibos are getting out of control. No one I mean, wants the fucking amiibos except Doobie. Okay, just sell Doobie <laughs> all the fucking amiibos because I, I don't just, want. I them. like to collect them. That's all. I, I don't like want the shit. amiibos. I just want the cool perks in the game, please. God, I personally, please. I personally don't care about amiibos one way or another, but I think it's still a bad move to put like, hey, you want to play hard difficulty? Yeah, and you bought the game. Well, you gotta they buy had, a fucking they, amiibo. They I had, know, they, dude. Breath of the Wild hid hard mode essentially behind amiibo and DLC. So can't do that, dude. Wait, all, wait. All I know, all I know is, but master mode is DLC though, right? That is DLC. You have yeah. to, but you have to pay, of course, the twenty dollars for both packs because you can't buy individual packs. Right. And I had no interest in the first pack. I mean, I'll, I'm gonna get it, but I'm gonna get it when the second pack comes. And do yeah. the hero mode and all that stuff. See that I don't. I don't really have. You know, just DLC. It's whatever. It's an expansion pack, if you will. This. I mean, I, this is a little bit. Amiibo were phys It's literally physical DLC. Physical DLC. The, That's what it is. Disguised it's, it's a DLC as a toy. Figurine. Disguised. Yep. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta buy it. I gotta buy the game. I gotta buy the amiibo, and then I gotta unlock the hard mode, and then I gotta throw the amiibo away. Because I, I don't want a little you, amiibo sitting. I will. I will tell you the most sitting around bullshit. my apartment. <laughs> I'm still trying to get laid, Doobie. I don't want <laughs> amiibo sitting around my apartment. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I got my amiibo all lined up in a row. No, to burn all it right, right up now. On my TV. Burn it. <laughs> Do you not see my room? I, I my walls are covered in posters. I'm totally not getting poon. I do. So <laughs> let's be honest here. <laughs> I do like the um, the David Cho poster on the bottom right, right underneath you, at the whale right there. That's David that is, Cho, right? No, that's that's Cassandra. That's, that's Cassandra. Oh right. Oh fuck. I don't know why I said that's David the Cho. shark that's one. I mean. Yeah, I love this one. Yeah. yeah. I do not fear your teeth. Yeah, he had. That was the first picture I saw that he posted uh, when I first saw him. He was like posting to Reddit. He was like asking people. He was like, "Hey, I'm an artist." Uh, and I'm doing paintings, and it was the fucking shark. That's by the, the way, shout picture. out to Coke Can. Shout if you Coke like Can. this artwork, he show sells it. it. Show it. It's great. It's I love cool. it. He's a great artist. Show, show the picture. Can you take it off the wall or no? He's like, yeah, you motherfucker, you're making me take my shit off my guy. I'll be right back. Hold on. I, I got I got one. I got one to show you. I'll be right back. All right, nice. 
<laughs> fucking dude, Loco's it's picture. Totally freeing it, For me, it's like, of course, right? I have I have six of these, and of course, it's the week I'm not at home. Yeah, and then so of course on the back cool. I have that one too, which I like. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, so Ursa good. Ursa Minor. Yeah, I think it's Ursa Minor. Yeah, I love the shark, man. I think the shark's so cool. Yeah, man. I dude, when he had that the uh, the Black Friday sale, it was totally worth it. That's our buddy Coke Can. You could find his art. Let me let me put it up on the screen. That's not his real name, but that's what we that's <laughs> the nickname we give him. What's his website? Oh, uh Matthew Matthew Oh Dash Matthew Dash Cassanda dot com. Everything related to Matthew Cassanda <laughs> you can find by just Googling his name because he never uses any other name besides his own name. <laughs> All right, so hold we'll on, I'm just showing him their website their, his website really quick. See All this right. is this is his art. He's a fucking amazing artist. Uh, I got this picture coming on the way. This is fucking dope. Um, these are prints you could get not original artworks just limited pr- uh, run prints but you can contact him if you were interested in original oh, artworks there it is he does commissions uh, just an amazing I, I do have some originals though all right go ahead you can show your uh... all right so here's a uh, first one he did some reaper stuff that's actually really cool he has reaped a lot yeah uh, here's a uh... Oh, I, I guess he, he he said it was a doodle or something. It's like a mech, like a watercolor I mech. I think I remember seeing that on his Instagram. Yeah. Uh, There's another Reaper. Yeah, it's dope. He sent me a sketch with that one. I don't know. That's fucking spooky as fuck, dude. And then uh, this one, which is really good. It's kind of dark, though. <laughs> yeah. <it's- laughs> It's fucking the, that's amazing. Show the, yeah. the text at the bottom. <laughs> Among friends. Yeah, you gotta oh, frame yeah. that one. Yeah, I have frames, but yeah, that's it's it's actually it the webcam does not do it justice because he actually has the same webcam and uses the same webcam that I use, and he he painted that one on stream, and um, yeah, the webcam does not do it justice. It looks really good. But yeah, yeah, great artist. He watercolor. He does watercolor paintings for the most part. Oh my god, Doobie, <laughs> dude, that's my Check Discord yep. for my yep. amiibo picture. And <laughs> look <Yep>. over. <laughs> Doobie's fucking amiibo wall. Uh, is that dude, I love. TV? I love the blue yarn Yoshi riding the woolly. Uh, the uh, the other the uh, Pucci amiibo. They're yeah. both like yarn. It's you great. Fucking weeb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see <laughs> Mark. Don't, yeah, I do. I got my. I'm missing. Ike, I like the link. I'm missing. Say I like the link. I'm missing female corn. I'm missing Ike. And... Oh, so you said female porn? I was like, oh, no, not yeah, female. No, porn. Missing female <laughs> porn. <laughs> missing female well, that's porn. a pretty easy thing to fill your collection. So, I mean... and I'm missing Lucina. I I do like the the Wind Waker. That's the Wind Waker link, right? Wind Waker Link, uh, like Twilight Princess, Wolf Link, and Twilight Princess Link. I do like the blue Yoshi, but I, I wish he wasn't riding that fucking weird ass sock. It's thing. Poochie. I don't like Poochie. Fuck Aww. Poochie. I keep asking. Gotta go back and play Yoshi's Island, man. Putting on. Uh... She's so cute. And then I got Cloud, of course, because Final Fantasy. Of course. <laughs> well, now you can buy Samus. Yep. Yeah, I don't. I don't to. have a Samus, but I might have to now. For, uh, well, Metroid you will Prime. if you want to play hard mode. <laughs> well, You're dude, you can't wait, dude. Just wait until Metroid Prime Four, where you have. To, if you want 100 percent the game, you got to get the Samus in you, Bo. Samus. That's crazy. The no. new, the new uh, Castlevania, where to unlock the upside down castle, you have to buy hold, like hold seven on. amiibos. Hold on, <laughs> I would totally buy an Alucard or a Simon Belmont amiibo. I would. <laughs> Jerry, we I'm know. I mean, uh, Doobie, we know you're gonna buy any amiibo that comes out. <laughs> Each and every amiibo. That's I'm actually you, not. Is that your whole collection? Because I'll, that's yeah. actually not a big collection of amiibo. Say, no, it's not yeah. a big collection because I only, buy amiibo I only buy what's. I only buy what interests me. So I mean, like, <laughs> I did buy a Jigglypuff, but that was for my mom because that's her favorite Pokemon. That's pretty cool. I, I wish. I wish my mom was into Pokemon. I'm still kind of mad about it though, just because like. I don't know if you want to do DLC, that's great. Don't put it behind a paywall, but it's like, okay, if you're going to do it that way, 
at least put it like I mean, the Breath of the Wild was a little bit okay because you know what? I can download that exactly. You don't have to go and find a physical copy exactly. of it. Exactly. Yes, that's my point. It's, it's not as bad like, now. You don't have to as go to a fucking to be. Toys R Us to go get Dude, your fucking DLC. You could just click a Marth. I had to import that Marth from Japan. That's from <laughs> the United States Marth. I had to import that. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> no, but seriously, no, no, no. yeah, it's, I don't want to. Okay, the production's a little bit better finding them, but when they first dropped, it was impossible to find the Fire Emblem Amiibo. They just did not make enough. Yeah, because they didn't expect so many people to buy them. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, who Bro, buys these things? Man, no Nintendo joke, like, not if, providing enough stock for something? What a shocker. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't want to. I don't want to have to get my DLC and Toys R Us with like a fucking hood on, trying to cover my face up. Like, I know. <laughs> Hi, I'd like to buy Amiibo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> little children scare me. I'm not allowed to be within 100 feet of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh I just want to fucking press the button, get my expansion pack. But now they're making you go to fucking KB Toys. I'm almost tempted to bring them to work and just like decorate my office with oh, them. Oh god, also, like, that'd be no. a bad idea. Don't do that. I, I, Dude, I, it stays I in the room. Have my it stays in your five room. Morgana plush in my uh, in my de- on my desk. Just leave it in the room, Doobie. <laughs> leave it in the cave. All right, moving on. Vega RX Vega leaks. We got prices. We got little bit of benches. It's looking like um, end of August we're going to be seeing some more heavily more heavy testing. I'm sure that the main YouTubers will be getting them soon. Um, um, dude, I just wait for Ars Technica or Ann Antec. Just Ann Antec, dude. That's who I wait for. If anyone's going to do a review, I'm on a 20-page Ann Antec review. I like, uh, much. I like what's his name? Steven from Gamers Nexus. I think he does yeah, pretty, he's good pretty too. damn good reviews. Um, this, just, this is from Digital Trends pretty reliable source um you can find this anywhere this has been released uh so it's looking like vega this is what this is some of the leaks that they're saying that vega there's three different vega cards coming out there's going to be a lower one mid one higher one uh one on air then there's like a one on air that's limited edition there's one on liquid and then one liquid limited edition the one on liquids have a higher clock it looks like 1630 megahertz where the one on air looks like it's at 1536. Some people saying that they're running at 90 degrees Celsius at some points. Um, the memory clock's at 945 on all of them. And uh, the, the the highest one that got clocked on Fire Strike, which is 22,330, which is clocked just underneath the 1080. And um, AMD is pretty much, they're not really like going too crazy with their benches. Usually they like to, or usually NVIDIA, they kind of like to skew the the benches to make them really work in their favor. But AMD was like, look, you're getting basically around a 1080 performance stock, um, uh, I guess on liquid, because we don't really know which card is, is being pushed here. Whereas the one on air, the lower end one, uh, it's just a little bit lower than that, basically edging out the the 1070 by a good margin, maybe 10%. And um, it's interesting because here's the prices. This is this is what matters, right? What what are the prices? Um, I, oh, if they don't have the prices here, I guess. Let me see. If um, I can find 400, them. 500, 600. Yeah, let me see if I can find. So them. wait, so it's costing as much as a 1080? It's the main ones a 1080 for about a 1080. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Well, shit, well, why am little, I going to risk it then? A little, exactly, a little less than a 1080 from what we've been seeing. Well, I mean, it's one of those, If it makes sense if you have a free sync, but if you're buying $500, it doesn't matter. You probably got the money for a G-Sync. The thing that's scary to me, how, dude, 90 degrees Celsius as yeah. a run temp? What the well, fuck? Well, look at the TDP, which is around- I know, it's 300. Three, 345 yeah. watt TDP, where at, uh, the, the 1080s are drawing like- 180. Way less than that, almost half, almost half of that, yeah. and they're running at 1080, 1080 Ti performance levels. So this is not, people are kind of like, what? What's going on here? Well, I guess they can't. Their architecture is just not as solid as Nvidia's right now. They're just the, still well, not there. I don't know. The thing that I'm interested in though is the 1070 competitor, because if that can push out slightly better than a 1070, that could be a really good card then. Yeah, and that's what more people would buy. But the thing. It's weird how fucking power hungry these cards are. It's nuts. And I think it's mostly up to the the memory because it's HBM2. And if you buy this card and you have a, a, 
uh, say you have a PC right now and you're running like, I don't know, maybe you're a 970 and you're waiting to upgrade and you wanted to wait till Vega, you're going to need to buy a, a, a power supply. Your, your power supply, chances are at 345 watts, you're going to have to upgrade your power supply. And that's another, you I know. Mean, yeah. It depends on what power supply you got, but that's uh, that's hefty, dude. You're gonna be pushed. You're gonna yeah. be close. You're gonna want some headroom there. You're gonna be close. Say you got you're like 500 watt. Yeah, yeah. So you have a 500 watt. You're definitely gonna need to upgrade. And that's kind of yeah. like the standard here. I can't find well, that. I had a good chart with the prices on. I'm trying to find it. The only good news out of how hot and hungry these cards are running, miners don't want them. You're yeah, gonna actually be able to want. buy the freaking card for once. You'll definitely be able to buy. <laughs> so the the 64 air, which is um like the lower grade air it's at 499 so 500 dollars uh if you figure you wait for the add-in board partners you're looking at 550 560 and then add in tax you're almost at 600 dollars. at that point you might even just go up to uh 1080 ti if you're spending that much um, yeah, yeah because the 1080 ti you're going to get it for what like 650 700 yeah yeah, yeah. i've seen and, them i've seen them drop down to 630 at times yeah already and they're easy to get they're pretty mm -hmm. easy to get those cards and they well, run way cooler and they run way uh lower uh, they're way more efficient on power this is this is a little rough for amd the only i think the only what way people are just going to yeah the only mm -hmm. way people are buying these cards are if they're just that adamant Again, <laughs> adamantly right. against uh, and don't Intel and NVIDIA. Don't underestimate don't, um, that either because yeah, there are people that, that are very adamant at saying, fuck you, NVIDIA. I yeah, this that way, dude. If it, okay, if it's if it's the same price as a 1080 and it's about a 1080, or in some games it's a better than a 1080, some games it's, it's comparable to a 1080 for a 1080 price, some people are going to buy it. That's not a terrible deal. Yeah. Like, it's just, that's that's standard market. Should it come out a year earlier? Hell yeah. And should you yeah. buy the six hundred dollar water cooled one? Probably fucking no. But like, if it's a ten eighty for a ten eighty, you do have well, to give it some credit that it's a ten eighty. If it's running, but you're a, saying you're saying 90. that it's a ten eighty. It's a ten eighty for a ten eighty, except it's running hotter than a ten eighty and it's consuming more power than a ten eighty. Yeah, right. But if you already have a, a new FreeSync monitor and you have a decent computer, who cares? Like yeah, if you have if you too. have the stuff if you already have the stuff there is a case for it. I'm like if you're building a computer from scratch, I want to tell you to go buy one. But like there is definitely a case for it. It's not as I don't know. It's just one of those. It's not as terrible as some people are trying to make it out. I think. I think but if it's you not had great. a free sync monitor, that'd be the only case for it, because at that price, man, at that price, it's it's a hard sell at this at the benches that we're seeing. If it's running that hot. You're gonna want to go to liquid. You're gonna want to put it on water because that's fucking hot, dude. I get nervous when my GPU hits eighty. You know, um, I get nervous when anything hits seventy, dude. Yeah, if, like, if it's getting if up it's there, ninety, dude. You're, if you're starting getting to a hundred, it's starting. It's gonna melt and, literally. Um, and then we're talking um, adding board partners, so we'll probably see some better cooling because they got to get rid of the blower style GPUs. They're just garbage. They don't really well, cool that well. What I'm interested too is uh, I want that's why I want full benchmarks out of it too because if it's a reference card you got to compare it against the reference 1080 also. Yeah, I think they have been though, right? I, it's a re see that's the been? thing is yeah it's still since it just got announced it's still just been whoever's got one it hasn't really scientifically been tested if that makes sense so I want more testing. I still think it should have came out fucking eight months ago. If it would have came out eight months ago it would have been a lot better. It's got HB. Right now, it's, yeah. it's got the 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 second memory HBM two, um, and uh, it's running pretty fucking. It's running pretty strong, which is crazy. But like I was saying, Let's like see. it's to me, it's about that ten seventy competitor. Yeah, if you can, which is going to be three ninety nine, right? If you can get a ten seventy competitor that does better than a ten seventy, but you can actually buy for four hundred dollars right now, that's a damn good card. Yeah, four hundred bucks. And if it runs like a 1070, that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, but you gotta remember, Nvidia—they're gonna drop their prices, right? It's it, that's an easy drop. I mean, dropping 50 sure. bucks, dropping 50 if, bucks to, to match that price. So it's gotta be better than a 1070 to kind of sway you see, people. And but the problem is right now in the market is Nvidia can drop their price all they want. It's still gonna be that's 1070 is still gonna be sold for 600 fucking bucks. Yeah, but that's only—I think that'll be done in a couple of weeks. Everyone's, I mean, I'm hoping mining, too. Mining's over, pretty much. I'm hoping too, but you never know, dude. It's one of those. It as long as until until I see it, I'll I'll believe it when I see it. You know what I mean? And it's the same thing about the AMD card. 
but right now, if you want to go buy a 1070, you got to be paying 500, 600 bucks. Yeah. And if you can get a card for 400, that's actually good. That that's something that should be applauded. And the 1070 is a fucking awesome card. Not many people need a 1080 or yeah, a 1080 exactly. Ti. A 1070 is like the card to get, I would say, for the price. No, the 1070 is insane, especially if it's at the price it's supposed to be. It's like yeah. crap, dude. Not even like six months ago, I was looking at some of those for three hundred and thirty dollars, and for that, it's an insane card. Yeah, and if you're not like the only reason you would want 1080 or a 1080 Ti is if you're, uh, uh, if you have the money for one and two, if you're have a 4K monitor and you want to get that, you want to get the best experience possible. Not many people are moving to 4K. They have no problem with 1080p. I still have a 1080p TV and it looks fucking wonderful. And I don't plan on getting a PS4 Pro uh, or upgrading at least until Black Friday. So, um, you know, uh, uh, 1070 performance for 400 bucks. And uh, you got a 1080p monitor and it's free sync. That's that's a pretty good buy. That's a pretty good buy. So that's pretty cool. Plus, I think AMD is kicking ass with the Threadripper, and uh, that's only going to help them out. Um, that's there's been some weird things about that too that I'm, but it seems really cool. What it's it's kind of well, someone deleted one, and it's an Epic chip almost, but it's. The way it is, is it's two eight core chips fused together with the mesh, you know, the meshing material. And uh, there's yeah, two dummy that. chips in it. Yeah, that's that's interesting to me, though. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I, I wonder I wonder exactly the benefits of doing that other than um, just getting more core. It's I think it's that, but it, I think a lot of it's actually heating because those chips themselves are already at 180 TDP. Those things are already running really hot themselves. Yeah. So I think it's spacing for that. But the cool thing that I've also heard about that is, okay, if you got space for four cores, that could be something we see in a year or two years is them just, here you go. Here's a 32 core processor. That's what the, that's fucking crazy. I would love to have one of those. dude. <laughs> yeah. Your fucking render times would be non-existent. All right, moving on. Uh, interesting. Vegas seems a little disappointing, but we still it don't does. even have the full, yeah. the full everything. So we'll, I'm sure... You'll hear a lot more. Well, Plus, a lot of people are excited about it, so that'll drive some interest. I think. Well, honestly, the other thing I want to see from it is uh, 4K stuff, because you were even mentioning 4K at this point with the 1080 Ti out. I wouldn't even buy a 1080 if I'm trying to do 4K. And if it's only doing four ten a 1080, like that's gonna kill it for 4K. Yeah. Well, uh, if you, I don't know, man. 4K is pretty rough. 4K that's, is a pretty rough resolution to run. That's my point. Yeah, like I, I, if I want to run 10, like 4K, I'm buying the 1080 Ti. That's you have it. to. I think you yeah. have to. And even with the 1080, because I have a 1080 Ti, and it, there's some games I can't run 4K as much as I would love to. Like Witcher 3, I could barely get the what I need uh, max. You have to max everything out, right? And that's the baseline. It's like max the settings, and then how does 4K run? Uh, and you could just barely get 60 frames on witcher 3 which is a pretty fucking old game uh some games are getting more optimized but like ghost recon wildlands you can't play that at 4k with the 1080 ti you're gonna have to get another one <laughs> which is another fucking 700 bucks well, uh, so it's say, rough. it's getting crazier man i bet you witcher 3 even at 60 frames running uh max everything at 4k i bet you that's a really good looking game though. dude it's fucking yeah. gorgeous yeah. the game is so good looking still how old is that game dude it's still like two or three good. years. Yeah, it's like three it's years. Pretty, it's still not that old. <laughs> it's pretty nice. Man. Well, what it's I was gonna nice say though is like, if that's the thing that scares me about that for four, like that 4K side is like, the 1080 and possibly Vega here. That's the 4K at 30 card, and the 1080 Ti is supposed to be the 4K at 60 card. Mm -hmm. And if you're only getting, if you're spending 500 or 600 dollars for 4K at 30, and you can spend an extra 30 for 4k at 60 yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a hard sell it's it's a little disappointing especially running at the at the temperatures and the power draw um it just goes to show you that their their architect their uh, graphic architecture is just not as fine-tuned as nvidia is and maybe that has something to do with the team there because they just don't have the money and the manpower to try to push it up there but uh I'm sure they'll come into their own. Uh, I'm just happy that they're driving prices down. They're releasing new stuff, like interesting new stuff that people are excited about. And uh, shaking the Intel market is awesome. So keep going, AMD. NVIDIA oh. market too. 
Nvidia Mark, yeah. No. Just keep going, AMD. You guys are doing good. Uh, Persona 5 anime coming in 2018. This looks quite interesting. Now, to the... Oh, God, that was so loud. Uh, to the uh, listeners, if... Do you, if I, I want to know if you guys remember if we talked about a Persona 5 anime and how awesome that would be in an older episode. I think maybe it was last week or the week before. I thought we talked about it, but I could be wrong. And I'm going to play this video. Uh, but what do you guys think about this? I love oh, it. Yeah. Like I said, I like, I like anime. I like Persona. I like the Persona 4 anime. Uh, well, this, I, like I said, I believe that they did two different persona four animes like the first one wasn't that good but the second one was good uh but yeah so i mean i'm gonna watch it yeah it's kind of like how they did like persona four and then persona four golden yeah it's, persona four golden anime, anime. kind of is like here's one that's okay and here's one that's definitely better yeah but i i trust them with the persona five to get it right the first time given how much time they put into the game did they say I, which uh production company uh, A1, I believe, the same people who did the um, the Daybreakers yes. anime that came out before Persona 5 dropped, which was like a little 20-minute te teaser, kind of. Yeah, um, A1. They've hmm. also handled Persona 3 and Persona 4 animations, so this they're not... It's not like they're new to this. stylized, too. The, at least this trailer is super stylized. Uh, if it's anything like, like the game, it's going to be really nice. That's what I'm saying. Mm. I might be more interested in this than the actual fucking game, to be honest. If if I'm going <laughs> to be honest with you. If you want the story without any of the grinding. Yes, yeah. I'm in, dude. That's what I'm saying. Because <laughs> yeah, the story is awesome. Uh, yeah, there's you... <laughs> no no word on a Western localization, which prob which means like It'll be Western fans, release though. of subs and dubs. But let's be honest, Crunchyroll will probably be, be airing it when it comes and even yep. if they're not, somebody's gonna get a hold of it, Maybe and I'll dub, dub it, it, and it'll be thrown up. Maybe oh, I'll dub God. it. I'll dub the show. Dub it? You'll dub it? <laughs> the Persona 5, no what? life abridged. Oh, boy. I'll, I'll wait for what? someone to sub it, and then I'll dub it. Wayne will just dub all the verb. voices. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just do all the weird anime noises. Uh, but yeah, man, like I said, I love anime. So like, like Doobie said, I'm sure Crunchyroll will probably pick this up. I don't see why they wouldn't. And they had, uh, they had Daybreaker, on Verb, so dude. I mean, they already, they've already had Persona animation on Crunchyroll. Yeah, though, like the uh, an episode will release in Japan, and then like two hours later, it'll release on Crunchyroll dubbed or That's not dubbed, but subbed. Yeah, That's if they dope. do it like they do Dragon Ball Super. Yeah, this but is gonna be for, popular too, so they're for sure will do it. Oh, yeah, Dude, yeah. Persona Five exploded in the West. Yeah, yeah, it's a guarantee to come here. Yep. Cool. Uh, so, uh, oops, I accidentally put the wrong thing in. Um, <laughs> uh, can, PUBG. Can just, okay, oh, yeah. go ahead. I was just gonna ask since we do have a couple of very good anime people here. Um. Uh, Really, what the fuck is Verve? What is the difference between Crunchyroll and Verve? What is Verve by Crunchyroll? I don't get it. Oh, yeah, no yeah, yeah. It's like some kind of like... I think it's a, like a combination of different streaming channels. And just Crunchyroll is like one part of that. I don't know, man. Like, I, I just go to Crunchyroll. And if it's not on Crunchyroll, I just... There's like millions of uh, anime streaming websites that you can just watch anime for free. You can on. watch anime on Twitch now. Yeah, yeah dude, Twitch, Twitch is streaming right anime. Really? Yeah, it's yeah, like Twitch one channel. It's Crunchyroll, dude. It's the yeah. Twitch presents right now. Yeah, it's just marathoning anime, dude. And I, I haven't watched any of it, but I popped in there every once in a while just to watch Twitch chat. Like, I don't even care about whatever anime they're watching. I it's just, just a bunch of anime chat. emotes and probably a lot of uh, <laughs> Nico, Nico, ni. No, dude, it's From hilarious. Love Live. <laughs> Love it. Oh, man, Love Live is great. So PUBG stream sniping ban divides the community out of Polygon. Developer speaks up after players speak out. Uh, so stream sniping is when you are watching someone stream and you can see where they're at. And then you attack them on your game. You're in the same game with them. You're seeing their stream. You see what they're doing. And then you kind of... It's like the the modern day uh, when you used to sit next it's to someone screen playing... Screen Screen cheating. Screen, screen, yeah. screen cheating, yeah. Screen... What is it called? Screen... Screen cheating. Screen peeking. I was yeah, screen peeking. 
had a name. I, maybe it is screen peaking or something. Let me see if I can find it. But uh, it's I mean, what forced people of... to like install blankets. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> across their of... TV. <laughs> yeah. Or like when you play streamers... Madden and you used to watch like what play they would pick and then you set up your defense. Same thing. Yeah, a lot yep. of they they do it a lot by like the map. So a lot of the streamers I watch, they always have their webcam over the map or something over the map. Because that's how a lot of the stream snipers do it. Yeah, because it's pretty difficult to do it just by seeing the landmarks because PUBG is like pretty all the everything kind of looks the same. That's why yeah, I fucking unless you know, hate the game. Unless you know the game really well, I can you can learn it. I mean it's it's it is one of those games that you can learn the map. I mean, mm -hmm. I learned Daisy's map entirely and it all looks exactly the same with Arma 2 graphics, so yeah, like, but this map it cha it changes though, right? Every every uh, match is like a slightly different variation of the same map. Is no, that... it's the same map. Oh, is it the same map? It's I just the it loot just... changes. The... Oh, but uh, no, like, man, I mean, come on, like, even I I've read this and I've heard Summit talk about it. Summit was the one that supposedly got stream sniped. It was Summit and Shroud. No, yeah. Dude, I was... Yep. I was I was in that Reddit thread all night. That it was it was spicy. Cause oh. that's, dude, I I so will say this. What's the what's going on? Let's address what exactly the issue is. Basically, it was it all started because someone made a Reddit post, um, and the person who made the Reddit post was the person who was banned, because yeah, Loto. basically yeah, Summit and Shroud were streaming together playing PUBG. Uh, Summit got killed. And then Shroud was still playing around for a couple of minutes after Summit got killed. And then Shroud got killed, and both of them were pretty much bitching that it was stream sniping, which, I don't know, dude. It honestly, it could have been, but I really doubt it. But it, that's just how some PUBG streamers are, is if they so died, they find it, was stream, who... it was stream sniping. How'd they find how out who was doing it? it? Um, see, that's the thing is you, uh, you have no proof that they were doing it. They just banned the person who killed trout yeah because that basically he awful. in his defense he he was around the area basically heard a gunfight and then went and checked it out yeah which you, i mean if you that's what happens it, in that game if this, i would be fucking pissed look the thing is though is he, you could first of all delay. like like jeremy said or like jerry said um i mean you can't really prove it because there's no way to prove it. Like they, they basically they just ban the person that killed them, and that's it. But not only that, but I mean, it's stream sniping. Who gives a shit? People have been doing it for ever since streamers have been streaming. And like Wayne said, ever since we've had like split 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 yeah. screen co op, people have been doing it. It's I mean, well, it's not. I it's mean, it's inevitable. it's not a fun thing to do. It's not a fun thing to go like experience. I guess I don't know. Like it but, sucks, but it's it's a part of a thing. But the other yeah. thing is like if you if it really sucks that much for you that it's happening, set a fucking delay on your stream. Yeah, delay like, your stream. Solved, dude, put a three minute delay on your stream or something while you're playing that game. Yeah, that's it's crazy. not gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah. not. I'm because then, but like, don't stream. How many kills are attributed to stream sniping? Then is that a cop out for him? He's like, oh, that's it's another stream. That's strip, what a lot you know? of people seem to think. Is it is that's a, a slippery, cop out for them? Yeah, it's a kind slippery of, yeah. road, man. You don't. Well, like some had said, Dude, I watched the only reason the, I got uh, killed was because they were stream sniping. I'm better yeah. than this. I, I was watching uh, the little clip that's also in this article of Summit talking about it a little bit. And uh, he even said, he's like, yeah, like, I got no idea if the kid was doing it. It was just in the, in the heat of the moment I said that. And that's, that's exactly reasonable. That is reasonable. Like, that's like if you go and play CSGO or something like that, and some dude just fucking kills you, and you're like, oh, that's an aimbot. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I can't aim that good. That guy's aiming better than me. That's a fucking aimbot. You know, yeah. or that guy has wall hacks because he, uh, yeah. he pre-fired when I, when I came around the corner, you know. It's Got it's like hack, one of those man. things where it I mean it's questionable I mean but in the to be completely honest like you're just mad in the heat of the moment and you make a accusation yeah and for some reason they decided to ban some that's guy. what I was gonna say though it's like how is that how <laughs> what, so what how is I'd that against pissed. the terms of service how is that a ban worthy thing like yeah. where in the terms of service does it say like hey if if you're streaming and you kill someone. Like you're banned. Like what the fuck, dude? If, if, you're, streaming, the guy, no. if you're streaming and you get killed by someone, 
Yeah, that's, that guy gets yeah, banned. That guy yeah, gets banned. Like, what the fuck? It's fucking insane. It's insane. The guy saying he it was a false accusation. He says he doesn't even watch Twitch. And well, says, that's, a it, uh, that's a lie. That's a lie. Even Twitch. if it was, even if it was real, though, how? Yeah, yeah. Even if he was stream sniping, why? Why should he get banned? seven day banned? That's crazy. <laughs> I'd like, be so pissed. Uh, well, that. I'm I'm glad that people are upset about it on on uh you know on his end for him you know I don't think yeah. it's right to ban him for that you know it's, no well, you, it, yo you think it's, it's bad now it, wait till the game hits consoles he probably yeah. wasn't stream sniper I don't know many people who uh I don't know, I guess I shouldn't say it. no many people I mean, but you know when you're playing a game are you are you actively watching someone while playing the game that's in the same map as you are you actively trying to stream snipe if you're actually trying to play the game like you would have to actually want to do that uh, to do it effectively right you can't just yeah. like and people well, don't get me wrong people do do that though no, yeah sure i mean to, like I'm, fuck around yeah i'm sure there's there's like trolls who because like i'm saying like it's not something that you have on in the background and you just and you can do it at the same time you have to like you know make sure that you you're there and he's not looking out for you and you know it's i think it's pretty fucked up that they banned them for that yeah especially uh, no proof no well, proof whatsoever other than he, he died he killed yeah. him yeah i'm also interested that the, the the article was saying it was a very divided community because it might be now but i'm just gonna say that night of that reddit post coming out that was a very undivided community yeah they, they were, were pissed? really livid yeah well to, all, to also be fair reddit has the hive mind mentality oh, yeah. it's like so yeah. yeah so everything seems united when you're on reddit <laughs> Especially when it's someone who's like a Twitch popular a yeah. popular figure like that, you know, fuck mm. that guy. Well, it will happen that, but then he's the that, number one that guy streamers. too, right? Uh, Summit is, yeah, yeah. He's like the uh, street the, like he, yeah. Summit's up there. PUBG streamer, yeah, like yeah. Summit's up there. Lyrics up there. Shroudy's up there too because he's yeah. a big streamer too. I mean, it's okay. His actual stream title is Shroud, but it, it's Shroudy. He's a CS pro. Yeah, and here it says, well, yeah, I called bro. stream sniping. Summit said in a stream that addressed the Battlegrounds uh, ban drama, which some users are blaming him for and Shroud for directly. I'm fucking sorry, dude. I didn't know I was supposed to be this fucking angel who's not allowed to have fucking emotions and call these things out, even if I don't know if they're true or not. It's not uh, Summit's fault. It's not, yeah, it's not their yeah. fault at all. It's not Summit's fault. It's not Shroud's fault. It's not I the mean, fault of the guy who was supposedly stream sniping. Yeah. Even if he was stream sniping, it's not his fucking fault. I mean, fault. I will say that's a bullshit. That That is the most PR bullshit yeah. apology I've ever it, heard. It is. But, but, I mean, it's bullshit that, like, people would get pissed at Summit for oh, yeah, it. It's not his fault. Like, I mean... I what dude, is he dude, like dude, not allowed to have a negative reaction when he's no, on stream playing a dude, video game no. and raging? I don't I don't have a monster sponsorship. There isn't a monster fridge behind me. <laughs> he's got a you know <laughs> true. If a true. ban has been issued, this is a quote. If a ban has been issued I- issued incorrectly, we will admit our mistake and lift the ban. And then it goes on, wrote Poopy Queen, the lead community <laughs> manager for Battlegrounds. Poopy yeah. Queen. Oh uh, no, what's just, funny I mean, there is that if they <laughs> What they're saying is that it technically violates the terms of service, but come on now, like fucking, who are you kidding? Just and also, fu- where's their proof? Where's just, I want, I want their proof, dude? What what they do to get the proof that he did that or the proof that he didn't? Are they do they have some crazy anti cheat installed on this dude's computer? Yeah, with that's a key just, logger just it, like traces you know IP back to see that he was on insane. Twitch at that time. It's absolutely insane that they that they banned. It, it also shows that they have a higher. You know, they treat him much higher than they treat a normal game player, a normal customer. Yeah. You know, if they're going to do something like ban someone for killing you, <laughs> that is insane. The no only proof. way, the only way that they could ever prove somebody is stream sniping is if they are like uh, playing the game and for some reason they can tell that you were on Twitch on yes. that specific person's Twitch website watching. Yeah, and I mean, even then, even then, I mean, you can still have it like muted or not be paying attention. Somebody else in your house could be watching that stream. You know, there's no way to prove it. You You literally get BTTV, and you can hide yourself from appearing in chat. Yeah, when you look at chat logs, or just not sign into your account. You can't prove it. The only way you can uh, not have this happen is like Jerry said. You have to do a delay or something. And if they're gonna cry about it like that, dude, how have they not figured out a way to stop it? Just throw a little delay on your and, fucking game. Is that and the game's deal? coming out on console, so there's no way they can even implement a 
you must tie your Twitch account to play. Because that would just that limits players, and it's not going to work on console. No, they would. Yeah, well, they wouldn't no. do that. To be honest, this I is just think the, they were so bitching dumb. that I don't even think they were the streamers themselves were bitching that much. Yeah, no, this they is were. just like, that's, this is that's just their, a knee jerk. Yeah, this is just an extreme, style. extreme knee jerk reaction by the development team. That's all this is, and I got no idea why why they didn't just instantly rectify it and unban that kid. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they should have done immediately. That's crazy. there shouldn't. Yeah, I would have been so mad, dude. I'm glad that you know there was a whole thing about it, so that's cool. We got some music. We got a couple more news stories, and then we're done. Dark Souls vinyl soundtrack is a limited edition nine LP collector set, and it actually looks fucking pretty dope. This is it right here. You can see it on the video. Uh, uh, I don't know who listens to the Dark Souls soundtrack. It's kind of all I will say spooky. about the Dark Souls soundtrack is Doobie, that Motor- you're gonna buy it, aren't you? Motoi Sakuraba is one of my favorite composers <laughs> of all time up there with Nobu Uematsu. Uh They also did the Star Ocean series soundtracks. Um, you can look at their wiki page. They've done so much. Like, just so, like I can't, I can't even explain how much their soundtracks, like how much they've done that you don't even realize is this person. Dude. And Dark Souls are great. Yeah. Dude, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not kidding around. I really like the Dark Souls soundtrack, dude. Really? The yeah, dude. The Dark Souls soundtrack is really good. It's like, have you ever? Hell. It's like Halloween have you ever? Music. I mean, no, oh no. Have you ever? Have you ever just listened? You like listening to like solo piano type stuff, like relaxing solo piano. Yeah, I I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. Dark Souls soundtrack. Listen to uh, Gwen's Gwen's soundtrack or Gwen's song off of uh, Dark Souls One, dude. That is such oh, a I know beautiful you're talking song. About. I know you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, dude, it is so good. But yeah, I would, arrangements. I would buy these. I would not buy it. if if they're separately. If if you can buy them separately and not in a full set, then I would buy like the first and third Dark Souls soundtrack. Yeah, I, like, I don't want to support Dark Souls. Any too, any track, any track with like a vocal orchestral, like with the the choir. It's oh, I love it. Yeah, I I this would be, I do like Dark Souls. This is pretty cool, but. Um, I just find that's an interesting soundtrack to purchase. That's very gloomy and what's glib. what's the price on it? It's a good question. Let's find out. We've got it here. It's nine uh, LPs, Pry Collector's Edition. Uh, there's only uh, two thousand copies. Expect to go and sell this fall. It doesn't have a price on this article. Uh, Probably so like a buck have... fifty, two hundred. Wow, that that would be pretty expensive. That I mean, two thousand only two thousand printed nine LPs, probably really nice artwork and stuff. I don't think we have a price yet. Yeah, I actually have a uh, have a record player, and I would actually listen to it. But some jackass that's just a collector is not going <laughs> to just wait he's until he's going to buy it out, and I'm not going to get a copy. Just wait until somebody buys it and just starts scratching it, <laughs> like a remix. Remix. If you're in the audio, if start you're in the, blowing air horns. Close your ears now. Okay, good. All right. The the, the audio, the autoplay video. I I got you. I got it. Okay, so uh, Destiny Two. Oh, this, now that's pop ups on this fucking website. Destiny Two PC beta release date confirmed, and it is um end of the month, August 29th. Yes, end of yep, the month. August end 29th. of the month, boys. That's pretty dope. They also released uh, PC specs too. Yes, minimum it says requirements. Here, minimum you'll need at least a GTX 660 or an it's HD so low. 750. That's really, yeah, that's really, really low. low. An i3 3250. <laughs> that's crazy. That's really the specs low. are really What's low. What's the card again? Literally, your phone has might have a, a stronger GTX processor 660. than that. Oh, cool! I have a 650. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're beat. <laughs> you're beat by one by a ten. Dude, I'm uh, telling you, it's so it's so, my computer sold. I'm running a 650 Ti. <laughs> yeah, uh, you won't be able to get the to the beta then. That's right. about time to upgrade though. How old is that? How old is that card? Four four years. Oh, that's is older it? than four years. I, yeah, I, I was built, gonna say that's. I, like I a built my PC. I built my PC in the summer of 2013. Yeah, but you probably bought an but older the card. card. Was, yeah. The no, card of course really I did because it was cheaper. Yeah. So it's not a four year old card. It's like a six. No, it's not a four year old. card. Yeah, it's a lot older than that. The, the build itself is four years old though. Yeah, which is see. too old. <laughs> the DTX 660 is uh, 
I don't have the, here we go. Let me see. Oh, it doesn't show me the Also the the, that I3's, what, Sandy Bridge? An I, a Sandy Bridge I3, pretty sure? Canyon, maybe? Um, maybe. Ivy Bridge, sure yeah. Yep, Ivy Bridge. Yes, all right, yeah. Dual core, 3.5 gigahertz dual core, um, 1155 chipset. <laughs> Six gigs of RAM to play, though. That's cool though. Mm. All right, we'll be into it. I'm I wonder. I wonder what this game looks like on low settings. It's probably <laughs> like <laughs> Minecraft. It probably looks like Minecraft. Dude, Dude with all of the with, with this spec, Super with these Destiny. specs, like that's crazy. what does this game look like on low? That is crazy. <laughs> I want to play it on low now just to see. You're probably I'll downloading totally your phone. They, they, they went across the the campus and asked Daddy Blizzard. Okay, I want those World of Warcraft specs, my dude. How do yeah. I make this game look all right while running on anything? Yeah, that's one thing about um, about. Uh, I want my game to look good on a Pentium Four. What do yeah, I do? One thing about Blizzard is that they they really can make your specs last. Like you can run any of their games on anything, man. Uh, motion capture actor claims to be working on GTA Six. I heard rumors about GTA Six coming out. It is in, de- in it is in development, um, so they're doing they're still doing motion cap for Red Dead Redemption Two. So we're probably not going to see that for a little bit. Um, and GTA Six, which is awesome, that game is going to be gigantic, gigantic. I've, I've been finding out recently since we started doing this uh, podcast, and I've been looking through news and stuff. A lot of leaks of games that are coming out. Like ninety percent of it is people that work on it and put it in their fucking resume. That's yeah. like ninety percent of links links yep. that come out. Like the last Hearthstone expansion, uh, say, dude, Angoro. That's been like, yeah, that's been like the last four Hearthstone expansions. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah been voice dude, like, actors. Every time it's a fucking random ass voice actor that puts a credit on their resume before the game's even announced. <laughs> before the expansion's even announced, they're like, hey, I did the voice on this. Yeah. And people find it and they're like, oh, what's this? Well, there's like no code words or anything in there. It's just like it's just like Grand Theft Auto 6 rock by Rockstar. <laughs> like, come on, man. <laughs> uh, a lot of leaks too, as you'll see, is like uh, like the shipping guys to prove it's real. They'll take a picture of it and somehow send it to someone, and that kind of gets lost. Like a lot of the iPhone leaks were like that. They'll get in a shipment to prove, like the I don't know, I guess to the to someone like, is this a real shipment? They'll take a picture of it, and there you go. There's a photo of the new iPhone or something. Didn't that happen with like Harry Potter at one point too? I think so. Someone got like a shipment of Harry Potter books way back in the day and took a picture of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's that leaks are weird, man. So, if Grand Theft Auto Six is uh, if it, let's say let's say it's in production, which I totally believe it is, because Grand Theft Auto Five sold so damn well, you know, Six is probably going to be crazy. Yeah. Where where do you want it? Gigantic. Do you want it, do you want it back in Liberty City? Do you want it in Vice City? I personally want Vice City. I think revisiting that location would be fun, dude. Uh, uh, you know what I would think be uh, like a Vegas type setting would be kind of cool. Yeah, that was so like from like, like San, Las Vegas? From the original San Andreas. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but there was a Vegas setting in that game. Oh, yeah. you're right. Like that, but like built up. You're right. There was a Vegas setting in that. What was it called? I can't remember. Uh, I, can't remember. I don't remember. You had, uh, uh, a Vice City, like a Tommy Rossetti, like a real modern day Tommy Rossetti. That would be fucking awesome. Al Pacino as the voice actor for that. <laughs> not, <laughs> that'd be not gonna dope. lie, dude. Um, setting wise, four was my favorite. Yeah, I liked four. Uh, New wise. York. Yeah, it, New it York. was Los yeah. Venturas. Los Venturas. Yeah. Uh, number four, where you would like, uh, like the first time you see like Times Square, and you were like, "Holy shit, this looks just like Times Square." It's fucking crazy. And then you shoot everyone there. That's like that's what made that game so great. <laughs> well, <laughs> so it made that game so good. Well, uh, I liked. I don't know. I like that because it. The setting for that let you really differentiate the districts more so to me than like five has. Where five, it's like there's a couple of different districts in the city, but it's mostly just city and country. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, they do it more subtly. Like you have like the rich area, you know, and then like. Right. Yeah. 
at the Oakland area. Um, but I agree. I think four had had a great setting. Um, I, I think like six would definitely City. bring back an East Coast feel. I would like to see Vice City now that you say that. I think that was yeah, and story dude. wise, that was one of my favorite Grand Theft Autos. That was fucking great. What about Atlanta? Atlanta? Atlanta like Atlanta is cool. or scene. London? We could do London. No. London would be sick. I mean, the weren't like the old school Grand Theft Auto games, like one of them I'm certain was based in like a London setting. Like I'm talking like know. the top I down. The old one. Grand I played, Theft the, old, I played the old one on the demo and I hated it so much. That was a terrible game. <laughs> and man, dude, just imagine GTA 2 remade as GTA 6. <laughs> it I'm would be pumped. a better game. I'm pumped. They always make like some fucking groundbreaking shit. You imagine, like the... if... dude. Let's do. Let's do. Come on. Let's do uh, Tokyo. Yeah, Tokyo. I would love a Grand Theft Auto like just set in a different country. In that was that would be maybe? great. Do what? Tokyo in the future. Like twenty <laughs> cyberpunk. Is that That'd what we're flying getting at? cars? Grand, like a Grand like Theft a auto in space. Grand <laughs> Theft Call Blade Duty Runner. Ride. Is yeah, that Blade what we're Runner. doing? Yeah, Blade Runner themed fucking Grand Theft. That'd be nice. No, I think you're right. Like a Grand Theft Auto, like Sahara Desert. That'd be cool. But I would Grand just Theft love auto, a different Tokyo country. Drift. That'd be cool. But we're not going to get that. It's just going to be some city in the U.S. But I'm cool. With I mean, too, I would like a new setting. Maybe Philadelphia. But Morocco. Yeah. Like we just keep naming cities this entire the Detroit. <laughs> Detroit. That would be a good one. It would be it would be actually less violent so, than so Detroit. Say, actually like real is. life. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, any deep topics? I don't really have any deep talks, topics unless you guys wanted to talk about something in the news or anything um, related. Uh, it looks like uh, Bitcoin is about to fork. Uh, should be forking. I think they said it's going to fork. I think it was like five. I forget when they, let's see if I can figure it out. But this is big news in cryptocurrency world. Um, because basically what is going to happen Segwit, is that. dude. Say that they again? Got, they got Segwit pushed through. So now they got to fork it pretty much. Or want yeah. to. Yeah. They have to. They're, they're saying blocks, that dude. they have to. There's a lot of people who disagree. There's a lot of, there's a lot of people on both sides. I'm kind of for the fork. Um, big, it's basically this fork splits the currency. Uh, it's going to be the old Bitcoin and then Bitcoin Cash, and anyone who holds Bitcoin is going to automatically get it turned into Bitcoin Cash. Uh, I think depending on uh, what wallet you have, I'm pretty sure. I don't think I don't think every every um, currency um, currency trading place is going to switch it to Bitcoin Cash, but I'm pretty sure most of them are. Um, I need to figure out what the time is because it's, you're going to see either good news or bad news once that time hits. And, Pretty uh, much. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I personally think that it's a good, I, I think it's going to turn out to be good. Uh, 8 20 AM Eastern. So I think, um, tomorrow, 8 20 a.m. Eastern. For some reason, I thought it was at nighttime. Nope. 8.20 a.m. Eastern. It's going to fork. Now, the way that I see it happening is that I be, I pretty much just see it being a good thing. I think it needs to fork. This, there's big problems in the scalability of the technology between both, both Bitcoin, Ethereum, a lot of the big uh, cryptocurrencies. They don't scale very well, meaning once, the, once that once a lot of people start to get into the currencies and there's a lot of trading going on, there's a lot of transactions. It doesn't hold it very well. And one of these, what the fork Which does, there's some, uh, there's some other better currencies, but you know, but we're we're not going to do that, I guess. <laughs> yeah, there are much better technologies, but they uh, they don't have the what is it called? The value, I guess. It's, it's not Daddy Bitcoin. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have the value. It doesn't have any backing. You need a lot of backing to kind of get that going. They can try and get investors to pump their cash up, but it's difficult. It's difficult. Wayne, I think you might like this, but also people who are really into, uh, you know, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, I just actually really recommend a podcast called Unchained. They actually just had a special in the last week that was, it was basically a big black person versus a small black person. And they ju she just interviewed both of them and they went on for probably about two hours of just going through a lot of the arguments on both sides of why you should fork and why you shouldn't fork. Now, what was the, what was the, um, 
argument to why you shouldn't fork. Do you remember? Um, shouldn't fork is mostly just because that's you don't want to cut it in it, half. You don't want to basically, cut the yeah, up. yeah. Basically, it's because the way it goes down to the fundamentals and the ideology, the ideology behind it. But it's also it is still a technology, and you want to be able to do it in the most stable way you can. And a big risk of forking it is, can you actually do this stably? Mm -hmm. Because they're going to try, but that, that actually is something that they really don't entirely know for sure yet is, can they actually do that right? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, most people don't understand about cryptocurrencies is that it's not a, it's not a real currency. It's based upon a technology which which dictates transactions. So you have a bunch of different currencies, such as Bitcoin, Ethereum. There's a whole bunch of them. Chaincoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin. I mean, there's there's so many. And they all kind of tweak the, the, the same kind of model. They all kind of have these different blockchains, which uh, facilitate, facilitate the transactions a little bit differently. One reason why a lot of people don't like Bitcoin is because it holds the ledger. It holds all of the transactions onto this master file. And it, for privacy reasons, you don't want that. Now and also just you know for transaction reasons that's painful as it keeps growing. Yeah, it just keeps growing, and you have to transfer that basically and have it recorded to that every time you make a transaction. Yeah, like, every single time, huge. every transaction it gets added to this master file, and uh, I think what the fork is going to do is kind of replace that. It kind of gets it 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 gets rid of that old transaction list and starts a new transaction list for the Bitcoin cash and the old bitcoin i believe i don't know what it, the transaction list is going to do with the old bitcoin i don't know if it just stays there it or if it there. just if it it does right it doesn't yeah, it, it doesn't just there. stop it, it, it mm -hmm. just keeps getting recorded there so if you uh, the a pro to that is that your transaction is recorded there is a receipt of your transaction now the way that the wallets work it's difficult to trace that back to an actual person but some people say that they can that you can trace it back to someone I don't know, through other means. But I personally don't think, you know, unless you're doing really, really big trades or unless you're doing some sketchy shit, um, you have anything to worry about with having that transaction information known. So um, one thing this fork is going to do is make that list a lot smaller for at least for at least a little bit and uh, make your transactions a lot more public until it starts to build back up again. This is going to be interesting. If you, if you hold cryptocurrency... I highly, this is not financial information, but I highly No, not suggest, at all, by the way. Yeah, no, this is not financial <laughs> advice. We are not financial advisors. <laughs> We're but, just dicking around talking about it, trying just, to understand it ourselves, basically. Yeah, we, I, I find it very fascinating. Dude, yeah. Um, I have made some money in it. Like, there is money to be made if you know how to do it, if you talk to the right people and you read about the different currencies and their, the way that the trades work, the way that the GDAX works, and the way that all these technologies kind of coincide. There's ICOs that you can invest to, which basically are uh, companies that are backed on these cryptocurrencies. So you can invest your cryptocurrency into these ICOs. And when they it's make like money, a, you make money. It's like a stock. It's like a stock. Yeah, it's exactly. It's like a stock opening up to the public, an IPO. It's instead of an IPO and it's an ICO. Yes, the same exact thing. And it's cool because uh, in the stock world, investing into an IPO is a, is a hell of a lot more difficult. The returns are very, very long-term. Like if you invest into an IPO, you're not getting returns for another 10, 20 years. It's very hard to just invest unless you have millions of dollars and you like to gamble. You can't really make money in the stock market, but you can you in can. cryptocurrency because oh, it's you such can a volatile you, market. If you have a lot of time on your hands and a lot of interest in it, you can definitely make money if you're not stupid. But you're, that being said, it's, it's volatile as fuck. Yeah, but because it's so volatile, that's why you can make money. Whereas the stock yeah. market is, you know, what a, a half a cent increase in a day or a half a cent decrease or maybe it goes down a dollar goes up a dollar next week or something it's very very slow on a macro scale cryptocurrency just like zoom, shoot it down where you can make like you can make a lot of money in one day trading cryptocurrencies but you got to know the technologies you got to know you got to know the community too because a lot of developers dictate the way the market 
runs, you know, something goes wrong with Ethereum, the market drops and people start selling, but that means another coin opens up and that gives you possibility to make money there. And that you got to learn how to trade. And it's just interesting. You got pump and dumpers, you got whales, you got tons of stuff, you know? Yeah, one of the funniest stories was the chain coin story, where it's basically don't, don't wait, the chain coin. Don't wait, wait did you just say coin. hump and dumper? <laughs> Pump and dump. Oh, I hump thought you said dump. hump and dumper. I was like, Gee, what the fuck? It's <laughs> like I space out for a second, come back, and all I hear is hump and dumper. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Basically, <laughs> you start buying a bunch of a coin and kind of holding it and giving it a perceived greater value than it actually has. So and then you send value. them home in a cab the next morning. <laughs> exactly. Basically. Exactly. Wow. Basically. So wait. So what? The, the, the chain coin story is is that the guy Dude, who I, I made some money off chain coins. All I'm saying. The guy who pretty much does the the facilitating of this this scheme. It wasn't really a scheme. It's completely legal. It's just an idea he had was to just have everyone just pump their money into this chain coin. Wait till it reach a master node, which means that master node status. It automatically does the transactions for you. Uh, so sort of, sort yeah. of like mining. You're not really mining. It kind of mines for you automatically. But you have to have a certain level of currency or a market cap to you get need, there. For a chain coin specifically, the master node is you have to have at least a thousand coins, yeah. and you can turn a thousand coins into a chain into a master node. There are other master node coins also, like Privix and some others that you can. But they're also Dash coin. Big yeah. One. They all di- they all have different amounts that you need for a master node, but I mean, like honestly, the dude's idea is not terrible. Well, and this was a this was like an unknown coin that had low yeah. amounts of coins, so you can hit that master node quickly, and that's what they did. And then they sold it all off. <laughs> the chain well, coin yeah. value was gone, but it doesn't really matter because they got the master node status, and the people who bought in who are holding that have that master node status. So it was a that really is. interesting scheme that this community, it was a whole community yeah. that did this. It wasn't just like some They're guy. Just printing money with the master nodes now, as long as it slowly, as long as it centers out and keeps going over like a year, they can be printing money. Yeah, and much. they're planning on doing it again. They plan on doing it with other coins. They plan on doing it. Uh, I know that he's excited. Uh, I forget his name. It's high on Next coins. Lead, high on coins. Yeah, high on dude, coins is the guy's name. He's a crazy motherfucker. Rich, he is, rich, crazy motherfucker who eats ramen int- all the time. He's very interesting, dude. He's actually, I don't know, I actually like watching his videos for entertainment value. Because, like, he gets, dude, he just gets, he's amped on everything he does. I'll put it that way. Yeah. He's just super fucking excited he's, about he's, everything. It's just some, like, Asian guy who smokes camel crushes uh, in his <laughs> shed and just makes a lot of money in cryptocurrencies and this is why Camel i think it's crushes dude oh my yeah. god yeah. like the dirty ones too not like the normal ones <laughs> some heavy camel crushes dude uh so i don't know cryptocurrencies it's a fun it's a fun market if you have the money to kind of put into it um because you you can lose a lot of money you can so yeah you can also lose definitely lose a lot there's a lot of people who lost a lot of money in ethereum because they thought hey it this is a stock. I can put money in it and I know it's going to go up. No, it's not a stock. It, it moves like a stock, but the trades don't work like a stock. It goes up and it goes down all the fucking time, all day. If you just look at the like the, uh, uh, the GDAX for the day, you'll see it's fucking at 250 and then uh, two minutes later, it's at $100. So you need to you know know the technology as well as knowing financial, uh, the way that the finance works really and also the way that like you were saying earlier yeah the tech the tech plays a big role of deciding if it's gonna like making or breaking it basically yeah because you have to kind of keep updated on it Mm -hmm. now if you now if you're someone who wants to put some money into cryptocurrencies for like just to have it and for the long haul which is something that i've been doing recently is just buying like ethereum or bitcoin and just holding on to it because they do go up there hasn't really been a, a time that it's everything has completely crashed. The entire cryptocurrency market slowly goes up. So if you're holding it for like like a stock, like you would a regular stock, holding it for 10, 20 years, then yes, you, it's, it's, it's basically like a stock. It'll increase in value. Maybe some will drop off, but you have to diversify. Have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Chaincoin, Dashcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin. I was going to say, Z-Cash. I'm going to have Litecoin to that. Yeah, NC Cash. Ripple too. There's a ton you can of buy, them. You can buy a fuck ton of Ripple really cheap, and that's huge. Yeah, and there's also a lot of scams going on too. So make sure you, you mm-hmm. are like logged into like the Reddit, the subreddits and stuff because like uh, the EOS 
the EOS coin right now is in a lot of trouble. There's some really sketchy shit going on with the fork. And if you have EOS, you probably already know about it. All right, let's end the show, guys. Thank you all for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, we will see you guys next week. We're going to be, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty much taking it easy this month and I'm going to be doing a lot of gaming and I want to upload a lot more. I want to spend more time nurturing this channel and crafting you, this channel into the baby that I want it to be. To you should, uh, buy chain coin. <laughs> you should, uh, you should do a let's play. I absolutely you should, should. You should just sit down and do a let's play on a video game and beat it. Yeah. I think I will, man. I think that's a good goal. That or um, we well, should all buy the same game and just play it. Let's all buy. Well, we're definitely getting Destiny. That's one. Yeah, I already pre-ordered Destiny. Doobie, you're gonna have to get a. Uh, you're gonna have to upgrade that extra to that extra ten and get that six sixty, man. <laughs> so you can play this. I, uh, <laughs> I, I do have a friend group that is uh, that wants me to get it on PS4, so I'll probably wind up buying it on PC and PS4. Nice, nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we should get. We should all get one game. What is a game right now that's kind of hype that we could be playing? Fortnite. Yeah, I'm interested in Fortnite, but is it worth picking up? Uh, do some do some research first. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll come back to you guys. We'll come back to you guys. You, you guys will see it. All right, guys, thank you all for listening. We'll catch you guys later. Peace. Peace. Wow. 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 It's wow. amazing. Oh, what wow. a great show. Oh, wow. Show what about a great video show. Wow. games. Oh, wow. Wow. It's amazing. It's incredible. Oh, wow.